morning and welcome to The Real Study with your hosts, Mr. Snippets. Welcome back to The Real Study. Black Girl Marvel. But I, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Mr. Marvelite. Not knowing anything about the film. All the movie things. You know, and like I was locked in right away. The pre-review. Me, guru. And me, the real study movie voice guy. Let's go to the poster wall. Uh, yes where's justine at she needs to be here immediately I know. <laughs> and interact with the comment oh yeah. cool hi betsy See, people love my names. People love my names. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I was curious. <laughs> I'm better. Doing pretty good. Great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I can hear you, but they oh. can. So, so, hey, guys. So, hey. So, this is what Snitty said that you guys missed. He said, welcome to the real study. We are doing a horror <laughs> weekend. This, we are doing a horror genre today. We are doing Intruder, which is um, our guest uh, hunting season's uh, pick. We're also doing, um, what is that movie? Tales from the Dark Side, the movie, which is Snitty's pick. And because Black Phone is the newest horror movie that's out, we decided to do that as well. And we hope you guys enjoy the conversation. Can you hear Snitty now? Whoa. Yes, Justine is here. Yay. Yeah. Have I followed this podcast? Let me follow the podcast. Oh, yeah, let me follow. Oh, oh God. guys. Can you switch over to your computer mic or do you have a headphone mic? Oh, that's nice. It's only mic. Is oh, it on? Boy. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, I'm host now. There you go. <laughs> Take it away. Everybody's like, still can't hear you. So, Josh, tell us a little bit about yourself. What got you into TikTok? What got you into all that jazz? Oh, gosh. I don't even know what got me into TikTok. I was watching over my wife's yeah, shoulder and, and just was balls. like, wait, what is that? Which is how <laughs> I got into Grey's Anatomy as well. Which, you know. But uh, <laughs> Okay, wait, uh, wait, 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 pause. What season of Grey's Anatomy are you on? I'm on 18, but I'm several episodes behind. Okay, we got to talk later, but you know, I'm loving okay. this year in 18. Yeah. I've finished the season, <laughs> but I don't have anybody to talk grays with, so I might be stalking you a little bit. All right, it's going to be a late night. That's cool, yeah. man. I'm here for it. But continue. And then yeah, you got so on TikTok? Yeah. I, well, I started out on YouTube in 2013. Um, mm. it, like creepy pasta was just becoming a thing. And I wanted to take a stab at writing some scary stories. I started out by telling a couple of stories that actually happened to me when I was in high school um, oh. that I'm not, you know, 100% sure if it was me, you know, scaring the pants off of each other or if it was something paranormal. But like we never really defined it with our friend group. And so I told those stories and they did really well. I think my first video did like 27,000 views <laughs> in 48 oh, hours, nice. which is wow. unbelievable. Yeah. Um, On YouTube also, like that's. Yeah. yeah. So, I need some yeah. of your yeah. mojo, man. Well, I had a little bit of help. I was working at a production company and uh, yeah. my friend Matt does behind the scenes stuff. 
um he knows all the like the black hat youtube stuff and he he's worked his way up to now he like tours mm -hmm. the world and talks about youtube um but this was like oh, you know 2013 so we were yeah, kind this of is experimenting like, yeah, and this figuring it out yeah. yeah yeah and there wasn't much horror stuff there so uh for two years oh yeah every no. week i wrote a new scary story performed it in a black void wow. edited it myself wrote it myself published it put it out in the world um and experience extreme burnout and stop for I'll seven years where, yeah. yeah. where can we were find tired. those yeah. can we find those anywhere? haunting season yeah i've okay. always been haunting season so uh haunting season on on youtube um and i started bringing oh, them okay. back and doing some new ones on a podcast version in uh i want to say like 2018 and then it like really kind of evolved during the pandemic into tiktok for sure i'm back by the way and they should be able to yeah. hear me now so <laughs> that was odd um so you said you you live in the southern california area you obviously mm -hmm. you know have had some dealings with the industry on some level um do you want to get further into the industry what what are your goals um yeah I, i'm kind of working at my dream job right now which is pretty wild um mm -hmm. i came up with a bunch of filmmakers in new york and um i went from that small production company with this one guy, Matt, and I ended up going freelance with his brother, Ryan, and Ryan and I and a couple other people kind of helped build this company that we're currently at in California. And so I was in charge of like all of Ryan's freelance stuff in New York while he was out with our CEO, Patrick, building the company in, in Los Angeles. And then I was the fourth official hire, and I'm now the senior creative director here. And we do um, oh, okay. documentary work, mostly with uh, rare mm -hmm. rare disorders and rare um, diseases and that sort of thing. Oh. Well, you're bringing so light to you... things that are harder for people to, to, to hear about. So that's awesome. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's really rewarding. And yeah. um, and I get to travel the world. I, I, I went before the pandemic, went to 15 countries in five years. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that TikTok you were talking about. All the travel you did and then everything then just like came to a halt and yeah like what do i do like yeah yeah so you're not yeah. doing like are you doing any of the creative yourself or are you doing any of like shooting or editing or any of that because yeah when it feels like from your tiktoks that you have experience in that yeah when when i when i was doing the freelancing in new york i was kind of a one-man band i was yeah, filming yeah. i was doing the sound i was lugging things on the subway yeah. i was throwing my back out five times a year yeah. um <laughs> and that kind of continued out here except i didn't have a, a five-floor walk-up apartment i had two yeah. steps into my house and I oh, nice. a car um and so i've worked from being the pretty much like one of two editors to now we have like 15 employees. So most of what oh. I do is review things and help Very polish cool. things and give yeah. notes. That's awesome though. Yeah. 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 It's, it's nice. I do not like editing. I'm good at it, but I do not <laughs> like it at all. I'm right. I do prefer, I do prefer I shooting to editing. Yeah. 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 I, I identify as a cinematographer and photographer. Yeah. Huh, that's interesting. I think another person on this panel does feel that way as well. Hmm. Who might that be? Yeah. Hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I, I, I figured yeah. that getting you two guys Ooh. together would be great because Brian also has uh, experience in the industry and has uh, photography under his belt and so on. And thank you, Joker, for the bits. Uh, one of our uh, long-term viewers uh, just came in and started sprinkling money at us for some reason because we love yeah, him, right. so we appreciate it. So uh, we have some horror movies to talk about, and I know that you picked Intruder, and we tend to take things in chronological order, at least lately. Uh, so let's talk about Intruder. What made you pick Intruder, and what were your initial thoughts on the season? Yeah, so my local friends, George and Nick, I hang out with, uh, I don't know, I'd, I'd say like monthly. Um, they live biking distance from my house, which we discovered after connecting on TikTok. And they do a horror podcast called uh, the Hallow Weekly Podcast, and they talk about horror movies. And so they came to me with Intruder and said, there's this movie made by Sam Raimi and his group after Evil Dead and no one's talking about it and we had no idea it existed. Do you want to watch it? And it was one of the most fun nights that we've had together. When you told me about this movie, I was shocked because the fact that I hadn't heard of something that Raimi and Bruce did together. I... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've been watching Evil Dead. Well, I've been watching since Army of Darkness, I'll be honest. I'm old I'm old enough to have caught that, but Evil Dead 2 was a little before my time. I came out when Law was born. So um 
<laughs> it's a little trickier, but mm -hmm. it, it it's weird because it takes place after like Evil Dead 2 was already filmed when they made Intruder. So they were already starting to build up uh, toward their their fame. Uh, so it was kind of strange to see them in this intermediary. Um, between... Yeah, especially because it seems like it has a lower budget than uh, or a significantly oh, yeah. lower budget than yeah. um, the second Evil Dead. For sure. And now Raimi, he didn't direct this one, right? He, no. He's no. in it. But... He's just an actor, which I think is very cool. It was cool. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's directed so by Scott Spiegel. Out of nowhere. Yeah. I was like, this is why he's so nuts about horror films. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and Scott Spiegel does not have a lot of directing credits. Yeah. Oh, you don't right. say. That was funny. <laughs> <laughs> Weirdly, he was in Evil Dead too, but that makes a lot of sense. Um, I would also say that the maybe the of course his brother, of course Ted, the, yeah, but Ted always has yeah, to play Ted. the weirdo in every movie. I swear. <laughs> He does, uh, so but hey, man, he's, he's had a full career playing a weirdo. Oh, yeah. Right. I love me some Ted Raimi just because of what he is. Well, there's something about <laughs> brothers in Hollywood, right? Like Clint, Clint Howard is the same thing. He always plays the kind of oddball second Sean, you know, Sean Gunn. fiddle. Sean That's Gunn is another one. There's something about the, the second brother. Um, all the movie things, what was your initial impression of Intruder? Oh, man, I totally went into this blind. Never heard of it. Um, I was immediately excited once I found out it was Sam Raimi. Bruce, you know, kind of thing, and then and then I immediately noticed that like, okay, this is nothing like a Raimi thing though, because it did not, you know. So I immediately know, okay, he had a small hand in it, but I don't know how much, you know, he did with it. And um, yeah, and it was like once I kind of like, I think I was trying to take it too seriously at first because I was like you know, that expectation level kind of shot up, you know, <laughs> when it's Raimi. And so I'm like, oh, then, but then I kind of just had to let, let go of that and kind of give myself in, you know, into the camp, the campiness of it, you know, and like the cinematography is pretty bad. <laughs> the editing... <laughs> it's just like, let's just light as much as we can, you know, or, or, or what, or whatnot. And like play with shadows and stuff like that. And like, it was a lot of, it felt like a lot of hard light. Oh, um, hard by a lot of POV shots. Yeah, exactly. A lot of POV. It, it felt very much like, okay, we know this guy who has a grocery store or has the keys to a grocery store and he's going to yeah. let us use this grocery store yeah. <laughs> so like, for a week. Yeah. Let's get it done. Yeah. Yeah. So, I did see on IMDb that it is a real grocery store and that it was open during the day and they were filming at night. Uh, that's why they <laughs> yeah. had to do the night crew. Like, oh, dude, that's so like, <laughs> I've literally crew. done stuff like that. You that's know? awesome. Like, yeah. Oh, let's. We can, we're going to shoot in this bar, but we got to wait till they close. And so we can shoot <laughs> stuff like that. So <laughs> it felt very much like brought me back to like those days too. So it was, it was a, a fun watch. Yeah, for sure. Black girl Marvel. Yes. What was your That's initial right. impression <laughs> of Intruder? Um, I was like, man, this movie is stupid. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's, but it's stupid in like, I guess a good way because it's like, it's so old and it's like, somebody's kind of like, it's kind of like, I would make a stupid movie. I feel like, cause I think my first movie it, it's coming. I'm hoping for you guys. Though. It's coming. It, it's it's going to be dumb. It's going to be like, somebody's going to like it. Cause I'm pretty sure there are people out there that love Intruder and they're like, this is my movie. Mm -hmm. They're going to do my movie. I watched this movie. Um, uh, and I was like, huh, is this, is this horror? I don't think so. It seems more like a comedy to me. I was cracking up <laughs> throughout this whole movie. I was laughing so hard because I was like, the whole premise of this film is this man loves his job so much. That's the premise of this film. And I think that might be the best premise for any movie I've ever heard of in my life. I love my job so much. I will kill you all. If I can't have you guys, no one can. <laughs> so that yeah. No other job can have you but this job. And he, gosh, it was hilarious. And then it was, it was a couple, of course, there was a couple of cliche thingies, like the one girl being alive, you know, like that's the girl that everybody kind of wanted. Mm -hmm. Like if this ain't typical 80s, I don't know what it is. Um, oh, and her name was Jennifer too. Like you couldn't get more 80s more, than that. More 80s than Jennifer. Gosh, they didn't have a different name for a white girl back in the 80s. It was always yeah. Jennifer. Um, <laughs> Um, um, but I thought it was funny. I, I did particularly care. I like some of the shots that happened, like like when they were sweeping, and it was like a look up through her, like sweeping on the floor, and you could see her, mm. or like when the girl was yeah. on the phone, and you could see her through the phone. I was like, well, that's interesting. I was like, you don't see stuff. 
like yeah. that. You know? Note that that was actually an overlay because in the preview they show the same shot, but it, there's no phone overlay. So that's literally an overlay over the screen after the fact. I like that, yeah, like on the I like lens, that, though, basically. Like, yeah. You see shots. You see a lot of shots in the film. You see the same shots, really. Um, yeah. But you could just name them out, like, oh, look at that belly, look at that thing, look at that. Thing, blah, blah. And I like the fact that I was looking at these, like, huh, looking up from the floor. I wouldn't have sunk it. Like it was just nice to see a different view i guess like a different angle because i'm like if you're gonna make a movie have some fun like you know mm -hmm. spin around in the air and make it be in a, sh a shot or something i don't know but like i just thought it was i thought those aspects are great especially like in a scary movie but i thought this movie was hilarious it needs to be like a horror comedy because this movie was totes hilarious it was it just had great moments of, of hilarity for me so the but movie as a comedy that's when i got into got into it more when I looked at it as a horror movie. I was like, right. "This is." I was like, "What is this?" The moment I laughed, I was like, oh, "It's a comedy," and I got, I got more into it. So yeah, <laughs> that's fair. So the movie has a strange twist, and I walked into it blind, not knowing there was a twist, and I didn't even look at the poster because I promise you, yeah, watch the poster or look at the poster and watch the trailer. Movie's ruined for you. Uh, the twist is revealed. Uh, I didn't even watch the trailer. I, I didn't either. do that. And these um, movie trailers are always yeah. they always tell you the story, right? Always. But the whole the whole time I thought was interesting is even all the shadows that that all the movie things mentioned the hard light shadows were of a guy in a leather jacket and there's always like everything mm. they did just lied to you the whole movie mm -hmm. rather than just misleading you it just straight lied to you the whole film yeah. no it's a whole lie and <laughs> <laughs> and I loved that it was because when that happened, I went, oh, OK, I didn't see that coming because he seemed like a really nice guy the whole time. Like he really cared about the store. Um, and, yeah, and, he, and he did. <laughs> um, no, because, OK, one of the funniest parts is when he's chasing Jennifer. Um, <laughs> <that's> and <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm it's going to be real yeah. cold here. Jennifer. 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 Um, <laughs> when he was chasing her. And he knocked over, like she knocked over tissue, and he picked up the tissue and put it back on the shelf. Oh, shelf. But Not you're the store. You're about to go murder her. Mind you, you just destroyed a full row of frosted flakes trying to crush her head. Like you don't care. You, you let's... and the lobsters. Oh, poor Those poor lobsters. lobsters. Poor Maybe lobsters. they were hungry. Maybe no. they had a little hand sandwich. <laughs> a little hand sandwich. He was just right. that was gross. Because like this is how I. When he, what did he say to her? He was like, "Why? Why did you do it?" And he was like, "Like, I just started with one. I couldn't let this. Then I just got carried away. But you were just dropping body parts in places like eyes and the olives or whatever. And like, like you just dropping. Body parts. Was that eye oh, just not in the olives? Like just bad packing? Like no. we, we don't no. know. How, how dare you try to justify this for this man?" I love that Raimi like brushed his finger against it and still ate the olive. That was fantastic. Yes. That was, it was great. Yeah. Seasoning, I guess. It was now, sauce. Did anybody else notice that not only did they love shopping cart cam, but they did it twice? They did the long shopping cart cam in the beginning, and then later on they did it again, and then they threw the guy into the yeah. shopping cart. They like got all their money out of the shopping carts. It's a rule of three, right? Yeah. They just did it. Yeah. Well, they they, they mm. did a lot of good foreshadowing with stuff like that. Um, the the. I don't know what you call the slide thing that the boxes would come down that aluminum oh, slide, yeah. you know, uh -huh. playing yeah, around totally. with it early. Of course, yeah. it bodies coming down there. Later. Oh, yeah. Listen, yeah, most yeah. hilarious thing was that head. Like I was like, hey, it's yeah. His body came down and that head just slipped into the box. I was like, if this is not storytelling, I don't know what it is. And the spike for the uh, for the receipts. Oh, that yeah. Was huge. Oh, like, yeah. You knew from the beginning, the first totally. time you saw that, we were cringing the whole first scene. We're like, it's going through his hand. It's going through his hand. And when it didn't, <laughs> uh, yeah. you're like, what the heck is this movie? And then they come back and put it through his eye. And we were like, yeah. yeah. yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> I did not expect him to be alive later. I, I was kind of shocked by that. <laughs> a, little, a little shocked. And it definitely kept you on your toes. You didn't know what was going to happen. But I'm not also sure that I cared what was going to happen. Like, it was kind of a mix of both. Like, I, really I just kind of rode along as it went. Everybody to die. I wanted, I wanted to be like a full on massacre, and nobody knew who yeah. killed anybody. But also, I saw it coming at the end where the cops didn't believe the young kids because cops never believe young kids. Not just cops. Yeah. Bruce well, Campbell cops. Oh well, yeah, Bruce Campbell cops. That's right. <laughs> but it's like I saw that coming at the end. I was just like. Because I'm like, this dude is covered in blood. Like his hands are covered in blood. And 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 this person just has blood spurted on them a little bit. And you're like, 
oh, you're going to go to jail because this one man said so. It was just like, what is happening? Well, but they it, pulled up and he was holding the cleaver. That's all you needed. He had the weapon in hand. Honestly, that was hilarious when they like knocked him out outside of the grocery store and like the blade, <laughs> when he failed, the blade went up and <laughs> into the boxes. I cried laughing. That was hilarious. <laughs> I was like, who decided? Well, well, no, 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 no. We need the knife to be up in the box. Mm-hmm. I think they were start. They, I think Raimi had this happen a lot in the early part of his career. He started to make a horror movie, and then as things started to not look like it was going to be serious, they just went, eh, "Go for it," and just ran it I don't off. No, I feel like I feel like horror is married to comedy. Like they are yeah. old lovers that, that you know mm-hmm. die at they the are. same time from heartbreak. You know, it's like a nice yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, like. I, it's one of those psychological things too, where it's like a release to like when you get scared, you know, or you see something that is kind of terrible. You, I mean, some people's reaction is to laugh because it's like that's a comfortable thing. I you know, it's a way to release. Yeah, yeah. that's something like I struggle that. with modern horror movies and and yeah. art house horror is that mm-hmm. the the trauma is so intense that they don't allow for these moments of levity and, yeah. and lightness and. And then when we do get movies that have that, like Halloween Kills was obviously very camp. Yeah. Um, people were outraged. They were <laughs> outraged that, that that they said, you know, evil died tonight too many times or that, you know, oh, yeah. there was okay, a yeah, character yeah. got stabbed through the armpit. Yeah. Like, Mike Myers was, he was a kung fu fighting. You understand me? Mike Myers was a different Mike. He, he came true. back different. Right. He came back different mm-hmm. this time. <laughs> Because he's transcending. Know. You feel me? Yeah, and I was like, he sure. elevated to another level, you guys. I was like, look at this. He became a little yeah. more Jason-like. It was weird. Mm. <laughs> because Jason's a little bit more spry and, and I don't know, he's a little faster, it seems, sometimes than Michael. Michael's always just... But if this Michael, Michael didn't do weak. that. I'm like, wait, this is weird. Yeah. Well, if he started quipping, then he's a little Freddy Krueger-ish, too, if you put a put some quips in there you think they'll have michael myers talk next no they should bumblebee him so he'll use radio to to do it right no well rob zombie had uh had michael myers talk didn't he did he for a second maybe i didn't watch that one it's so many there's two of them so many so Mm -hmm. many so this movie was definitely advertised as if it were Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell. They definitely put their names on the cover as if it was going to make the difference. Right. And I sat there I mean, waiting for Bruce. I was just like, is this another dark I, man? Is this another dark man? Oh, it is another dark man. Thanks. Okay. Uh, um, yeah. 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 I'm assuming they, they made this movie. It went nowhere. And then now with the resurgence of horror yeah. and, and home media and physical yeah. media, that they were just like, let's market the hell out of this and just get mm-hmm. it in some people's houses. Yeah. And honestly, I really don't mind. I really don't mind because yeah. I had so much fun with this. All the POV shots and the crazy lighting and uh, the creative kills. Um, yeah, and that know. was something I, I, I really appreciated was, okay, there's, there's some different stuff in here. And like, it's a grocery store too. Like there's, we don't get that setting very much you know you don't really see that at all like it's just, they're I, I, stuck I in one a, place you know? i read a thing where it said that um like that was a standout for this film it got positive yeah. reviews especially because it's like a horror film and it was it took place in a very unhorror filmy type place oh, and totally. you would think that yeah. a grocery store could be a horror film setting but yeah yeah um conveyor yeah. belt deaths and stuff yeah obviously it was meat hook deaths i was like oh not sam <laughs> can we talk not about yeah. can we talk about oh, the totally. fight that they have in the beginning of the movie before the horror <laughs> yeah. happens where oh, one Lord. guy is able to fight yeah. off nine people successfully but he gets bad. knocked out so easily mm-hmm. i know like he seems like such a menace right oh, my god and when she hit him with the meat cleaver and he passed out i was like sir three thousand men punched you in the face and you- <laughs> If you were a okay to run out of the yeah. store or wherever you were going, but she hits you, a girl who picked up a um, fire extinguisher and couldn't break a window, but she knocked you out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that makes all the sense in the world. But okay, all right. Little Jennifer knocked you out. Yes. Like, okay. Jennifer. So what about the fact that all the cops in this movie were inept? The ones that showed up didn't get a statement. They didn't ask about the brawl that occurred. They didn't. They they, they didn't were ask just. About the dead, dead there was nothing. 
in front of the door. It was nothing. They just showed up. They were like, you guys okay? Well, was there any, like, lewd conversation on the phone? No? Well, we're out of here then. Like, yeah, they're worried more about, like, language than... It was weird. ...than real things. Like, yeah. Honestly, for me, it was like GCPD. Gotham. We're in Gotham. They didn't have a they didn't have a vigilante. Gotham PD are so inept. These cops are so inept. <laughs> we were in Gotham. That's all. Just no Batman. This is this is Gotham. pre-Batman, if right? This, right. This is no. If this is Gotham. If there's no Batman, you yeah. die in the grocery store. <laughs> he was committed. I could see this. The shopper, like he's the villain now. Like he's the. He has a smock. You know, he wears the rubber gloves. This is the new villain I'll, for the I'll Batman. Never, I don't ever love my job that much that I murder everybody there. I just, you don't have a, yeah. I mean, the the benefits can't be that great. <laughs> Why not just kill the owner and take the store? I don't know. There's a lot, you know. You right. murder everybody. Everybody wanted their jobs. Everybody was like, well, I'm going work now. Everybody had those thoughts. And you were just like, I got carried away when I killed the first dude. It was so delicious. I didn't know what to do next, but kill everybody else. Like, <laughs> they say you get a taste even, for blood, though. So I don't know. He didn't even wash right. his hands. Like how, like, how dumb are you as a villain? To like be like, are you okay with bloody hands? Like, are you all right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's a villain by happenstance. I don't think he was a real villain. He was a passionate person who took his job very real. seriously. His tenure was I over. Was, I think he was a real villain. It was in his heart, Sinny. It was in his heart. He was just waiting for the the the, the door to be open, and the doors closing at his store was the open door. But yes. He's he's been a villain. So if the store had stayed open, he wouldn't have killed anyone, though. No. 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 Hmm. And mind you, he was it's not a great in- story. <laughs> <laughs> I do pick a little hard at stories, right. you know. Yeah. But you threads. know, if if the I can see him like eventually killing at the store if like because he didn't like the guy anyway. He customer. had an issue. He had an issue with the guy anyway. Like he was just like he doesn't listen and all this kind of stuff. He's talking about like he had an issue with him anyway. So it was bubbling, and you closing my store was oh, like yeah. the that was the last straw. You I mean, died. Plus, we don't really. I mean, we don't really know like what's going on at home. You know, like there could be oh, like yeah, all these the writers do yeah. either. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. they didn't think that deep. Do it, there like, was there was no story, character like, development. No, no, no these no, characters no. are very two dimensional. I mean the the. Yeah. Yeah. Boyfriend comes back for his change. He wants his loose change the second time he comes back. Yeah, like I don't know. Honestly, why did he leave the store? They made him. Like right. Like I was. They made him leave. Did I miss that part? So after the fight, they finally get back a hold of him again and make him leave. They kick him out. uh, Yeah. I think I went to the bathroom during that time. I just didn't push pause. I was like, it's okay. That's (laughs) right. When I come back Mm -hmm. to. So yeah. There was a lot of weird product placement that wasn't actual product placement in this movie. It was because it just happened to be on the store shelves, like oh, the Wonder yeah. Bread oh, and the Oreos. Yeah. Um, but then they did have some off, like off-brand stuff that was you know, purposely, like the beer. Yeah, so yeah, that was purposely beer. put in there. So it was beer. really odd. Mm-hmm. It's funny because that's actually a kind of beer now, where it's just like a white can. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, like that's actually something you can buy now. It's a couple cans. It's a couple cans like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, not that I drink beer or anything. Right. <laughs> I thought I recognized the second the the girl that was playing Jennifer's friend, and it's Renee Estevez, and she's been in a lot of stuff. Weirdly enough, she was even in Heather's the um, Estevez family. That I cannot figure out. Estevez? Yes, like, yeah. I think it is. Hold on. Yep, Emilio is her older brother, so she's a Sheen and a and an Estevez, yeah. uh, oh, wow. or an Estevez, I should say, not a Sheen. Uh, if I'm being yeah. polite, an Estevine, uh, yeah. an Estevine. <laughs> yes. Um, so I mean, that's interesting. It's, 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 She's no, no. Well, well, technically, I don't know how she's a. I don't know how she's an. Well, never mind. They, they, all of them are Estevez. Right. Sheen is just. Like Sheen that. is what they changed in order to get hired yeah, because the, they did yeah. not like yeah. the idea of having. You Spanish know what's names. crazy? Okay, yeah. I don't. I don't even want. I don't even want to like get into like that because I can get into that for like, with a lot of stuff. But it's just crazy to me, like how they had to change their names. I mean, they look white. Right. You wouldn't know that they were like Spanish unless they told you like we yeah. we Spaniards come from spaniards like you wouldn't know like they're so white like the same thing with um james rode his name is actually rodriguez and he's i was like oh mm. yeah but look like, at, that's new but even oscar <laughs> isaac who's a fairly not fairly new but new big like he got big in the last few years that's not oscar isaac it's the beginning of his name his last name is hernandez so like mm-hmm. 
Spanish, but honestly, Oscar Isaac still kind of sounds Spanish though. Like it's still it on the round. Like, it doesn't, but like to just change your name to Sheen like that, you definitely know ain't no ain't no Spaniards named Sheen. Mm -hmm. But it's just, I mean, but again, it's like Cameron Diaz, like she's like that too, but she's white past. It's just, it's just, it's just one of those things where it's like when you look at people, it's just like I really feel bad that they felt the need to do that. Yeah, yeah, agreed. It's, it sucks. And it's really like, it. yeah, it's like that's another one of those like results of like a system set in place mm -hmm. kind of thing yeah that's and still there sucks. like completely still you know, there. How, mm -hmm. you know how many just things to think about like how many spanish people actually like you have like spanish people have a lot of people to look up to and they probably don't even know it because mm -hmm. hollywood made these people change their names because they wouldn't ha like hire minorities or whatever right like that's crazy Oh yeah, no, and this goes back. Like there are tons of yeah, 50s and 60s sure. and 70s stars that this is the case. Oh my god! Yeah. And it even goes to black people because black people can be white passing, and you know, and not even have like a white parent. Like I know, like mm -hmm. like my aunt has two black parents. She is white. I said, baby, are you sure? But she, you know, <laughs> uh, but it's just crazy. I just feel, I just, it makes me like slightly sad that they just like yeah. had to give up like there. Like even for a little bit, like The Rock didn't even like tell people he was black. Totally. He was just like, yeah. like, I'm someone and this is like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Which after a while. That, isn't that kind of crazy too? Like he leaned more into the Samoan. Yeah. But that's because but of the relationship with Samoa and America for a hundred years. I know too. Like well, yeah. Samoans, it's, to say you're, I'm not saying for people to say say this, but again, it's like to say you're Samoan, it's like exotic, right? And to mm -hmm. say you're yeah. black is to say you're you're a murderer or you're like a hood person. Like yeah, that. whatever, like you know, whatever connotation yeah. uh -huh. they got a connotation with it. So yeah. being Samoan, it's like, oh, he's from the like, Yeah, oh, you know, like, he, but it's like he a whole black man. Finally, he's saying it. Finally, he's right. like, because it's like, come on, man, your, your daddy's black. You got to say you're black. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, and he yeah. was a hell of a wrestler, too. And that's where his like no, life came from, was his dad. No, literally. So, like, so it's yeah. like, come on, man, you got to. I'm feeling a little out of place. So I thought I would uh, join you guys. Sorry. No, I'm like... taking mine off. Oh, there you oh go. crap. Okay. <laughs> 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 These aren't even real. They're just blue blockers, but it made me feel really weird. So I love oh, wear them. Wear them. Oh, that's fair. Oh, they're, I mean, man. they just glare, but that's fine. They're, they're, that doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Makes me look. So I want to know. I want to know what everybody's favorite kill was in this, because I know not everybody's like a huge horror fan here. But you got to pick like with a bad, mm. you know, old movie Ooh. like this. You got to pick your yeah. favorite kill. I didn't kill. think about that. First. Kill saw. Kill saw. <laughs> the half the head loved yeah, it. Like, yes, oh, see, Biggie. Yeah. Biggie yeah. agrees. Head slice. Got to love it. Yeah, that one might be mine too. I feel like was that like the most gruesome one? It was definitely the most physical one because he like yeah. got him up on the table and like you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that one was. Oh man, yeah. Now, now, now it's all like coming back to me in my head now. Like, yeah, oh, that was yeah, gnarly. Like... <laughs> Raimi on a hook though. Yeah, that one's pretty good too. Raimi on a hook. Although he just sat there like this, the just the head. Yeah, like for a little while, I thought that was kind of interesting. Which I'm like, I guess, I guess that grocery store literally has a. You know, meat freezer, meat <laughs> like a real like butchery like, in the back. Yeah, yeah, real butcher. So that's a quality. Curtain. He was just hanging out. He didn't really have anything to do. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. He wasn't supposed to be Honestly, there that, that might day, be my right? Kill. I think Sam Raimi might be my kill. All right. Yeah. It was something about that kill, that and then when you see him, though. then when you see him again, it's just that was like, another foreshadowing like, thing too. He's looking at her. He's like, like yeah, <laughs> it's funny. Man, I guess I guess mine isn't really. A Kill, right it's a meme it's the it's the oh, the, the spike yeah. The spike. Uh, yeah but i just love the you know the room turning red and the person at the door yeah knocking, yeah know? yeah i like that too yeah that oh, was good you know uh, what you know what i take it back i think i do like sam raimi's but i also like when the bread man got killed because that was funny <laughs> like because he was just trying to he was all happy and upbeat like i got this bread for the store and then the guy just <laughs> and then he's, <laughs> and then he's facing the thing and then he slides out and the guy was just like Donkey Kong, it was like doink, he just like fell. <laughs> <laughs> so that one, I'll take that one. That was hilarious. That was great. Yeah. Like poor guy, he was just delivering his bread, man. I just felt so bad. And she's screaming bloody murder. Just like, mm -hmm. my question: When do when do they go home? Six a.m. Like, I know. Like, why are they there so late? Like, because like he showed up, like somebody's gonna come to the door, like they usually do, and take this bread. So I'm like. It's a long overnight shift. Yeah. Like, Especially for well, kind of a small store. Yeah. I was like, yeah. 
you to deliver the bread in the morning, baby boy. Like, why are you going to deliver right. bread? Why are you there, like... Like... Yeah, the bread should come. I think doesn't bread normally come at like four thirty a.m. Yeah, four, four or five. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. totally. Donuts and bread come at that time. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I mean, I know the crew was there to stock inventory. That's obviously what they're doing. They were even right. rotating stock, which I was like, wow, they caught which, that detail. I don't know how they caught that detail. Small, <laughs> that's a small amount of people to do stock for a grocery store, too. Like, yeah. it's it's usually like an army of people. Mm-hmm. Well, it was a last minute thing, right? They were like, hey, oh, by the right. way, we're selling the yeah. store, so we got to mark everything down, oh, and you're staying right. late. And everyone's like, all right, I got no yeah, plans. Yeah, I'm just point. a normal employee. I'd be like, I'll have yeah. to talk later. I got well, plans. Not only that, but as soon as, well, no, they did a good job in this movie of never, nobody really ever knew anybody died. They did a pretty good job until we get to Jennifer. Like, there's mm-hmm. 40 minutes of this film where people keep dropping like flies, but in conspicuous yeah. places. So. There are definitely. This almost like, feels yeah, like it needs a remake. I, I swear, a remake on this would be. Pretty I was thinking solid. about that too. Like, do it. Honestly, I would love to either a be a part of a remake or have a hand in writing the remake. Law was to play yeah. Jennifer. Just putting it out there. Oh yeah. yes. But, you'd <laughs> still, but, but your name would still be Jennifer. It has to be. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> call me Jenny. That's what yeah. I make them call. I make them call yeah. me Bully Jennifer. Mm-hmm. Call me Jenny. I like it. You can have all these scenes where they'd be like, Jennifer, it's Jenny. It's Jenny. No, yeah. literally. Can you look at the camera? Okay, because everybody, for the most part, was like nice people, right? Mm-hmm. And to me, yeah. that's so weird in an 80s film. Because usually 80s trope trope was like, the, the girl next door. And then like, this is the hot girl. And then this is the douchebag. And then this is the sweet one. That like, But everybody yeah. seems to be like very even temperament. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Evenly dumb. Dumb. Just kid, kid, <laughs> kids working in a grocery store, ready to go do their job. Yeah, yeah. Really dumb. Everybody had a bit of a stupid. Yeah. And if they remade this, they to for me to like just and just just gobble it up. It has to be so trophy that you yeah. have to have like the douchebag girl and the douchebag guy, and then like the sweet people and those kind of like you have to. You have so to. I yeah. would argue that this movie has already been remade, and it's the movie Slacks. Have you heard of Slacks? S L A X X. It is um, this movie, but it takes place in a like a clothing store, kind of like the Gap or like H and M, and they're changing overnight. The store's locked down. Mm. Um, they're going to let in one person uh, at a certain time. That's an influencer to talk about all the new clothes, oh, okay. and the killer is the pants. <laughs> they it sounds are more new. like rubber than it sounds they, like. Rubber. Yeah, yeah, but it's the rubber new pants. And intruder. They are um, designed to fit any body. So, like, you put them on, uh-huh. and it, like, you know, feels you out and, and uh-huh. fits you perfectly. But sometimes... And then kills you. Too perfect. And then, like, it's like some people in <laughs> half. Stupid. And It wants to make you into, like, what it thinks the ideal body is. So it's like, sure, yeah. To form you. Yeah, yeah. There's a bit of clown here. A little movie. bit of clown there, too. To a movie, clown. And they reverted me back to a 1920 British silent film called Trousers. Oh. In which it's a romance, in which a woman dresses like a man and then fast falls madly in love. It's very she's the manish. Yeah, that doesn't sound problematic at all. Oh. At um, all. <laughs> <laughs> I I would actually suggest Slacks. I think it's a great film. Yeah. Um, g- great in the same way that Intruder's great. But right. Yeah. <laughs> there was one other film that uh, Haunting Season had suggested for this episode, and it was Blood Diner. So if you want some extra reading, if you will, check out Blood oh Diner God, as well. Blood Diner. Dude, we did like a whole. That was like a project in my film school. Was like we had we had to do we had to take Blood Diner. It was a production class, and we had to make our production binder around Blood Diner. So oh we had to go like gosh. find a location and secure a location and do all these things around make producing Blood Diner. <laughs> that That's awesome. Wild, so buddy. Yeah. This yeah, movie, was... this movie is so much more on the ridiculous scale than than Intruder. Yeah, I read this. Uh, I saw yeah. it at a <laughs> horror movie marathon um, a couple of months ago with some friends, and I knew nothing about any of the movies that were playing. And mm. this one came up second to last, and Funny. blew my mind. <laughs> Just a like a short. Yeah, <laughs> for anyone interested, um, it's two brothers who own their father's restaurant. Their father is a brain in a jar. And he's getting them to create this blood feast to bring back this evil uh, goddess with sharp teeth and laser like eyes. Yes. Um, and they're feeding everyone in their vegan restaurant. They're feeding them like fingers. Wait, and, you said you said lasers out of the eyes? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. in. I'm in. And there's a there's a uh, Nazi rock band. There is. Um, I, I mean, just that some woman gets her head falafeled. 
Um, and it just starts <laughs> running around with like a giant, like a deep fried head. Mm-hmm. So wait, I'm starting to get like yoga hosers feel from this. Like yoga hosers wasn't, wasn't that bad. It's pretty oh. bad. <laughs> I love you, Kevin. I love you, Kevin, so much. But yeah, Don't do yoga oh, yeah. but like, yeah, I enjoy, I enjoy Kevin Smith films. I feel like yeah. he has fun filmmaking, and that's what I love about it. I agree. He take him seriously. He's not like, let me get you Jane and Silent Bob, you know, director's cut. Like, he's just having fun. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The artisan version, right? Yes. yes. Where Jay is drinking champagne. Um, that I don't <laughs> want to watch that movie. Mm. Uh, okay, I so do. I think we should, of course, I think we should go ahead and rate this film um, and move on since we do have two more. And one of them yeah. is an anthology with four stories, three stories with what they call three a fourth with, story. Yeah. Uh, right, right, right. thrown in yeah. there um so why don't we just take it in the same order haunting season what would you rate intruder on a scale from <laughs> one to ten uh i don't know i'd give it a i'd give it a solid four and a half i think this is a really <laughs> yeah. fun time it is not a well-written script you're not going to go into yeah. this as like a film student being like oh i'm blown away I'm by the character development yeah or yeah um it is a very adolescent film from some mm-hmm. really creative people uh Four point five. Yeah. Four point five. All the movie things. Um yeah, I think I'm kinda right there with haunting season. I'm giving it a five. Um, just because I like I, I appreciated the grocery store aspect and like and like from a filmmaking perspective, it's like I love those challenges of like, okay, we only have one location. Let's like make max out what we can do in location, you know, and like for a horror film it's it's unusual. I love what you mentioned. Yeah, they're all equally dumb, but I think like that helped you to like you didn't really anticipate who was gonna die in that way, you know. Like you it was like everyone was fair game because they're all stupid. So um yeah, a five for me. It was just like I didn't take it too seriously. Didn't seem like it took itself too seriously. So yeah. All right. F- five it is. Black five. Row Marvel. Originally I gave it a two. <laughs> oh <laughs> um, Wow. But then I raise it to two out of a three. To a four. Oh. I know right. <laughs> out of zero, I gave it a um, <laughs> I, I, it was originally a two. I gave it a four simply because there were elements about it that made me crack. I literally LOL. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't LOL a lot of things. I find these discussions can improve or or actually hurt my rating of films oh, sometimes. Yeah, no, um me. if everybody else bags on the movie as hard as I am, I'm like, wow, it's worse than I thought. Oh, this is terrible. Uh, and yeah. and in the reverse, because uh, I originally rated this a four on Letterboxd, but I think it's a five. I, I do. I'm thinking with all the movie things where there's there's enough in it, and I do think a remake would be fun. I, I really do. And I know yeah. that we talked about that, other, but I think I a fun agree. remake. But. I agree with Batsy that it should be, we should remake this film. We should remake this film. We don't have a grocery store, remake. and we all live all over the country, so this is going to be a little tricky. It yeah. doesn't matter, man. If we want it to happen, we'll make it happen. That's yeah, true. you budget in the flights. There you <laughs> go. Oh, that's true. Yeah. That's a fair so point. when I was in college, I used to have this spreadsheet and I would rate every movie that I watched stars one, you know, one through five, but I would have a BB next to the ones that were so bad they bounced off the bottom. And so I would give this a bounce back rating of four <laughs> out of five stars oh, because man. I think the watchability, if you go in knowing it's going to be terrible, yeah. but really fun and you have the right group of people, it could be like one of the best nights. I can see that. Well, yeah. so I was a little hard with my 4.5, but that's from right. like a, you know, a filmmaker's perspective, I guess. As soon as I watched Sam Raimi get thrown through a, a whole you know end cap of beer, I was like, oh, okay, I like this. <laughs> he got thrashed. Um, yeah. Jennifer so, yeah. has the longest i've ever seen in my life and she could barely run that doesn't make any sense <laughs> but like you said we only had to like suffer through about 10 minutes of the white girl falling and running and yeah not the killer. <laughs> but then decided to hide in a place where you could find her it was just mm-hmm. like honey pie <laughs> oh honey that's oof but okay that said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the pre-review. That is, of course, that small segment with uh, Sean, Super Comic Guru. And then we'll get back and we'll discuss both of the other films. Uh, we'll be right back. How's it going, Real Study viewers? I'm Sean, and I'm back with this week's pre-review. I only have a couple of movies for you this week that I felt were really good, but man, these are going to be awesome. First off, 
nationwide theaters. We get Jordan Peele's Note. I I have loved everything Jordan Peele's done since he came on the scene. He is absolutely incredible. I love his storytelling method. And this one has me really excited because I love a good alien story. Who doesn't? This looks absolutely incredible. The cast looks amazing. I cannot wait to see this one. I'm really hoping uh, I can make a Friday or Saturday scene of this movie. So, fingers crossed. I am a sucker for spy versus spy movies. And Netflix is bringing us one that feels like a AAA title if you ask me. The Rousseau brothers are directing... We have Ryan Gosling, we have Chris Evans, we have Spy vs. Spy, bring it on. This looks absolutely incredible. I think we're dealing with CIA operatives this time. It'll be nice to see Chris Evans on the wrong side of the law for once in a movie. I cannot wait to see this one. Like I said, I'm a sucker for these type movies, and this one has me watching it the day it's released. All right, Real Study viewers, like I said, I don't have much this week, but I hope you're all doing well, and I'll see y'all next time. And that was Sean with the pre-review. And of course, we have the movie Nope coming out this weekend, which should be a great old time. Although I am still yeah, saying, if I don't say Nope while watching that movie, I will be rating it lower by default. Just putting that out there. Respect. <laughs> Respect. So. I'm at it. I the next movie is is an anthology film. Uh, this was my pick, as you guys didn't get to hear me say at the beginning of the show, because my audio is terrible. Uh, this is an interesting uh, anthology because it is based on a TV show that was on uh, back in the day. Uh, but this was three stories that they compiled together. One of them was based on an Arthur, Arthur Conan Doyle story. One was based on a Stephen King short. And then that same short was actually turned into a screenplay by George Romero. So there's kind of a fun bit there. Uh, and the reason I actually suggested this film is actually for the third story, but we'll get to that here last uh, when we talk about this. So um, this has got a pretty good cast. Uh, looking back again, it's got Buscemi, oh, yeah. it's got Christian Slater, it's got Julianne Moore, Moore. Um, it's got, uh, let's see, who else? There, uh, J uh, William Hickey, who is one of the, the greatest voices in, in all of Hollywood. I've always loved his voice. Uh, as well as James Rimar and uh, Zoe, or not Zoe Kravitz. Ray Don <laughs> Chong is what I meant to say. A very, 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 very different. Uh, so anyway, um, so yeah, uh, she was the Zoe Kravitz of her day, like she was the one back in the like in like the seventies, eighties that people they always went to her. They wanted like a little diversity. They were like, there she is. It was like she was just passing enough or just exotic okay. looking enough. They, so Commando was her, Commando was my jam, so I I loved Ray Don Chong. So yeah. I love her back stuff i think she's an amazing actress but i'm with yeah. you so why don't we start with you black girl marvel what was your initial impression of tales from the dark side the movie here comes snady with another anthology film and geez louise no um this was funny too honestly like <laughs> i don't take nothing serious but um this was funny too i um I'm trying to remember them, like remember them in my head. I will say Julianne Moore played her part to perfection. Okay, I feel like this was the part she was born to play. I think people, I think people watched this and was like, she's gonna be something that kid. She's gonna make it in Hollywood because she was hilarious to me in this. Christian Slater always a gem. I love his voice. I can pick his voice out of a lineup. Mm -hmm. uh, he has such a distinctive voice. Um, but it was just, it was just like just certain things that they did. Like I've seen. Part of me feels like all the TV shows that I've seen when they have mummies come to life and do stuff based on a spell came from this movie. I, mean, I could be wrong because there could be other movies that I have done this before and this is where they got it from, but this is the first time I've seen it like older mm. than what I've oh, been watching. Right. Mm. And I've seen this, I've seen that trope happen a lot where it's just like, we do a spell and we have, it's usually like Jewish. It's usually like, what is it uh, called? Like the, the, the clay monster. The Jewish people, like they put like the little the, the scroll in them, and that's what brings them to life. I've seen that so many times. A go is it a golem? Golem. Golem is, is right. Golem. Yes. So I've seen that done, and then it's just I don't know. It's just it's I've seen different iterations of this. So like watching this, I was like, oh, is this where you get it from? I was like, mm. that's it. Like, that's interesting. If that's if that's the case, um, but I thought this was great. I thought everything was great. Um, all the different anthologies are funny. Also, Biggie just said it. Matthew Lawrence. 
was in it and it was yeah, he's so was cute good. so yeah. cute um i was like you've always been cute what's how is that possible like this is, this is crazy <laughs> um but i remember watch i grew up watching him so like it was just one of those things where i was just like oh hey it's a, a person and then like never harry i was like shut up i was like but she's yeah. like a great actor because i don't think she can act i'm not really i don't really think she's like that like she doesn't but the character that she played was like a dry character so like it, it worked for a person who probably didn't have like a lot of like acting prowess or whatever mm-hmm. but um i thought the job i thought the an- uh, anthology was funny um it was it kept me it, it kept me more engrossed than intruder did i, I will be i'll be mm-hmm. totally mm-hmm. totally honest with that um i will say my favorite one is the uh rate uh Ray Don Chong the third one yeah three marks we're gonna get just, there we're gonna get there that's uh, I, that, was the, that was the penultimate that was just like that's the that's the one that's winner. why they made yeah. this movie yeah. right Ooh. right yeah oh, so like, yeah. i was like yeah. all the movie things what did you think of this anthology um so i was pretty excited once the like first little bit of music starts playing uh because i used to watch the show when i was a kid and that creepy ass opening of the show like always creeped me out with that music and like the narrator and then like everything turns black and white you know and just like and so it was like great when they had a little hint call back to the show so i thought that was awesome um it felt very different than the show though uh if, if my memory serves me right like i don't remember the show being as funny or as like camp you know i think there may have been moments of that but i remember it taking itself a little more seriously but um i think there's a little bit of that um yeah i, I like that as an anthology it i it didn't fall like if i'm thinking about like the twilight zone movie i feel like that is a superior film com- compared to this one as far as like horror anthologies go or whatnot but um yeah they're definitely almost like the last one was the one i like probably the best um the one that was the most over the top with the one with william hickey i think um that <laughs> the cat, the cat one. man but i mean i love william hickey though every time i see him though i just think of you know uh christmas vacation um that's not right oh my... that cat just yeah. going on a murder street. <laughs> oh my god for no reason we didn't you... even know like was the cat possessed did it have the, i know like what is this what is yeah <laughs> where is this cat was fed up. This cat was yeah. fed up. <laughs> you totally could have cut that storyline into national lampoon's christmas vacation and it still could work <laughs> mm-hmm. even yeah. with the cat coming out of the body at the end oh yeah yeah totally yeah that but was like... so great i will say the practical effects was amazing they i were? just yeah, i miss i miss practical effects especially yeah. on the third one i was just like what oh, yeah. 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 And haunting oh, yeah, season. She gets like ripped open. Oh man, yeah. Oh my God, yes. It was just like <laughs> it was brutal. It was brutal. Yeah. What was your initial impression? I know that we spoke a little bit, and you said you're not you're new to anthologies. You're not like they're not your bag. So relatively much. new, relatively yeah. new. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been exploring them more and more because I've been reading them more. So I have these little oh. um, show off. He reads and stuff. He reads. I found, I found a reads. collection of these '70s, uh, like Ooh. ghost stories, oh, wow, and uh, and horror anthologies, and they're so oh, fun. Nice. And they're um, they're all like kind of top authors that I've never heard of from the '70s. Oh, crazy! And um, and every single one of them reminds me, like the pacing and the style of this. And so I found this nostalgic in a not nostalgic to my own experience but nostalgic to my new experience you know mm-hmm. um of just that style of storytelling it, it always takes me a little bit of time with a slower paced horror film because i watched so many of the modern ones and when i discovered horror i think it was the ring and then the sign signs came out and then i i was just kind of tracking from there forward and i didn't do a lot of backward looking until uh, recently really i'm, I'm like mm. currently working through all the 80 slashers i never saw um so the slower paced films take me a little while to settle into. And so once I realized that's what was going on with the mummy, you know, and I could see kind of the story structure happening, I was yeah. like, okay, I know what this is. And once I settled in, I was, I was there for the ride. I love mm. the practical effects. Um, and likewise, you know, the, the reason I bring these up is because in all of these stories, you get so much character development and so much like it almost, you have time to forget that you're watching a horror short and then the horror happens and it takes you completely Mm. off guard and i love that because we don't get enough of that nowadays they you know the um what is it vhs movies um 
they're great and i love watching the modern anthologies but they are a mile a minute with all the gore and the kills yeah that's actually asked if you had seen or actually anybody has seen the uh darkness uh i'm sorry in search of darkness horror anthology or the horror documentary it's a three-parter mm. oh no i wanted to see i get advertised that all the time on instagram and i've always i or screenshot it like every time there's probably like 40 screenshots of it in my phone because <laughs> i'm like oh yeah i gotta watch that it'll help you with your 80s slasher dive because it'll show you the ones you're not thinking of she said oh, it's amazing great. and part three just got released so um, if you want to know more, she can tell you all about it. What is um, it called one more time? The... In Search of Darkness. In Search of Dark. Yeah. For myself, I actually saw this movie in 1990 it. when it came out, 1991. So I saw it the year after it came out on VHS. Um, and, but I was, I'm old. I'm sorry. I was born uh, old enough to have seen this. I'm sorry. Um, Christian Slater at the time was also like my favorite actor because of Pump Up the Volume and Heathers and like he was kind of iconic at the time, you know, even Broken Arrow, even though now that's a terrible movie. Um, and I, I absolutely love just knowing he was in it was enough to draw me in. But the reason I suggested this movie and the reason I think everybody should watch this movie is the third story, which, like I said, we will get to. So let's talk about Lot 249 first. Uh, it's about a mummy and it's not your typical mummy story. It's it's okay. it, it's it's actually creepy. It's spooky. They keep him hidden. He's pretty strong. He's not wrapped in your traditional ways, so it, it kind of breaks some of those traditional mummy tropes and makes it kind of gross. But I love how they are able to turn that on its head, even and go, like yeah. But he's not. He's still a mummy, and you can take him down yeah. with a carving knife. So. Right. Um, I, I kind of rolled my eyes a little bit when I saw it was going to be a mummy story, but by the time Steve Buscemi was elbow deep, like yanking things out of its gut, I was like, yeah. oh, this is unique and great and wonderful. Right. And it is. And Buscemi, what what great actor to play the creepy neighbor that's going to do weird things. Uh, he was typecast I mean, even back then for the creepy guy, but. All right. All three of them are great actors like you can you could see it in this right even though this wasn't like you know a hard concept to come up with you can still see like how great of an of, of actors they are like in this like in their beginning stages so that was kind of cool for me to see kind of like because I'm, I'm always seeing like a uh, leprechaun with jennifer aniston and i'm just like oh okay yeah she's been terrible that's fine and but then to see like Julianne Moore and all that and Christian Slater, it was like, oh, okay. Especially Stu, Stu, uh, Steve Buscemi, I love him. So it's like to see he's always been this weird type of being. Yeah. Um, it was, I don't know. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed watching that. Also, I like the, like the shadow play. I like how like Christian Slater's character almost sees him, but then he goes and answers the phone. I was like, I would have ran into the Yeah, that was pretty good. With the two stairwells. Stair, stair, yeah. I was out the stairs and my phone rang. I'd have been like, no, but it's the '90s. If you don't, if if, if yeah, like, uh, wasn't a thing at that mm -hmm. time. I know it came out around like the '90s, or whatever. If it wasn't a thing at that time, you might miss something important. It might be you have to go back upstairs and check. So like that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But like, if this was made today, I'd have I'd have ran into the mummy. I'd have died because I'd have been like, yeah. See, that's the thing though. Change. This mummy didn't kill you unless you were its target. Like it knocked <laughs> everybody out of the way. It didn't care about who oh, it was near. Who would that have been? Did you get knocked over by a mummy for no reason and then he just disappears? That would be weird. <laughs> you see the door open and he walks into the door and then the door closes. It's like like light and shadow is like a nice thing to watch in this film, just how they played around with that. I like that the mummy cuts open the woman and stuffs flowers inside yeah, her because brutal. it was like a callback to what probably happened to him. Yeah. You know, it was mm -hmm. like kind of a sad heart then it wrapped her heart up touching too, moment. Like, yeah. <laughs> And he also Poor took the money. brains of the first guy. Like he he made took, yeah, he took the coat yeah. hanger and just yeah. did him in. He's literally did he did what, what, what was like what was done to him. But um, I don't know. I thought that I thought it was creepy. And I don't really think a lot of things are creepy. But I'm not like creepy. Like my skin is crawling. Creepy. I haven't found a movie like that yet. But um, I thought it was creepy in the sense of like, huh, that's that's good. I was like, <laughs> I was like analyzing it in that way. Like, huh, I wouldn't have thought. <laughs> okay, he get me for Type of, like that's how, like, that's literally what literally what I was saying into the. TV I'll take also, this <laughs> type of mummy story over even the Brendan Fraser like actiony. No, seriously, I have always I like the idea of the gothic horror villains being scary and 
This is one of the few. He leaves. Brian left. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one of those things that this is this is a rarity with mummies. You don't get this kind of right. creep factor with mummies. And I and I want it. I would love to see a movie where I actually yeah. found Dracula creepy again. And that's the last time was in 92. Um, so since then it's just been action or romance. And I'm like, all right, that's yeah. cute. But or comedy. Or comedy. And yeah, and I comedy. and I want yeah. scary again. I'd like to see it. So for me, this is refreshing to go back to. And what's weird is I I rated this on Letterbox like a year and a half ago. And when I went back, I went, Oh, okay, it's still the same rating. I did didn't change. And I've seen this movie probably oh. ten times. Oh wow. Since nineteen ninety. Oh. But I was a big that also you know there though. Yeah. Which is character was very gung-ho and like so you killed my sister and my best friend hmm. what are we gonna do with you like he was just so nice a lot about murdering a person yeah. like, what are we gonna do with you like, what? You little rascal <laughs> like, yeah. you, like, literally you little rascal like nah, yeah. you you, I'm gonna keep my eye on you buddy I think what baffles me about Christian Slater is that he was Oliver Twist on Broadway and then he became the guy from Heathers and that's quite mm-hmm. So this was he was both. If you watch, he's the he's Oliver Twist and like, oh, I'm an Ivy League kid in the beginning, and he's yeah. dialing it in until he yeah. realizes, and then he turns on the Heathers. Like he just he goes. Honestly, I'm, uh, not, I'm not mistaken. Didn't he? Did he die too? I remember. Christian Slater's Christian character. Slater? Oh. The twist at the end. You mean the actor? Yeah, is Christian Slater oh. still alive? For those watching, he's still alive. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm trying to remember. Yes. It's like, we don't see he him. Does. He doesn't die on screen, but he dies. He it's implied right. that they're gonna that his mummified <laughs> friends, yeah. sister and friend, okay. are gonna kill him. That's right. Yeah. He came up and like you know. He yeah, that was it. Good. Like yeah, yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was good. Classic. Honestly, yeah. Um, but I, I, I'm happy he died because if we, if we really think about it, all three of them people was terrible, but terrible people. Steve Buscemi's character, he was literally the dude from the grocery store that was just like, I'm just trying to make a living. I'm just trying to do stuff and y'all mess with me. So y'all die. Cause y'all mess. Like, that's yeah. literally what it was. Like, they just, dude stole his, like, that was his grant. Like, whatever it was, like, you stole this from me. I mean, right. it doesn't work to death, but he, you know, you die for this, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Seems like he ordered that mummy just to kill that guy. Honestly, put him past him i feel like he's very smart he would think of something like that where did he get the money for this mummy the last yeah. acquisition that he had they kind of oh, know right, it. they, they right, would he right. like buys and sells oh yeah that was a very quick narrative thing um from yeah. from joey um all right let's move on to uh the cat uh story um <laughs> which i thought was interesting the way they filmed all the the early like the 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 flashback sequences were all in that deep blue, kind of giving everything that yeah. cold feel. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a transition where they actually had William uh, come out of the tran- from the blue and the transitions into the scene, which was quite yeah. nice. I thought that was that was a nice little mm-hmm. touch. Um, but a ridiculous plot, nonetheless. Uh, the cat kills people like a lot. Period. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a story. Because yeah. of pharmaceuticals, like because of pharmaceutical testing. No. Yeah, yeah. five thousand cats were killed in pharmaceutical testing, so this cat shows up to kill people in for revenge. That's the yeah. premise. Did I miss that part? Yeah, I, think I missed that part too. Yeah, yeah. No, so like, it's quite literally the the own the will. Um, will what's the actor's name? I'm gonna That's mess it up. Again. I just had it a second ago. William Hickey's character specifically says, "Yeah, I yeah. run pharmaceuticals. We made this awesome drug that's basically Valium on crack, yeah. and we killed five thousand cats." To test it. Yes, right. Honestly, the cat was justified. I'm. I don't know what to say. The cat yeah. was justified. You kill my people, I kill you. You're justified. I don't know what to say. Nobody. They could have made this with like mice, like white mice testing, like you know, like in a slew of white mice could have ate these people faces or something like that. The cat was better though, because it was. You know, people don't like black cats anyway. They got a bad connotation, so like you just added a black cat to the mix. Honestly. This is giving me like that elephant that trampled that lady and it came back to her funeral to make sure it was done. It was it's giving me that vibe. I don't think I know that one. <laughs> yeah, what are you talking about? What is that? What <laughs> what elephant? <laughs> no. No. Uh, no. What country? What like give me everything. <laughs> give me everything. It was in Africa because it's an elephant. It's, it's Africa. So this this 
people are saying people are saying that this lady helped these poachers kill the baby elephant of this of this elephant like the, the child of this elephant that's what they're saying nobody knows for certain but everybody knows for certain that this elephant killed this lady see oh. just you know what i'm talking about this, she does show up to her funeral mm. This elephant kills this lady, right? And then everybody's like, oh my God. So they have a funeral for her like miles away. This elephant comes to her funeral Whoa. for a way to trample her funeral to the make John sure. Of elephants. So because to me, you they always say elephants have a good memory. Oh yeah. What this lady do? She did something. So the reports of her of, of them saying that she killed, like she helped kill poachers kill like the baby, I can only imagine. Okay, right. so I have a pitch for a remake, or or like the the story of this movie will be a remake of Double Jeopardy. Double Jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> the elephant can't uh, get in trouble twice. Will be animated. Double Jeopardy has to be one of my favorite. Not films. animated, no. Oh, no. I love the I live love action. I love Double Jeopardy. Operation Dumbo Stomp. Yeah. <laughs> Robert Pattinson. Let us in podcast says say uh, Robert Pattinson should play the elephant. Right. I I think that might work. <laughs> that might work. Yes, yes, yes. yes I, 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 I do think we should have a whole episode dedicated to talking about this elephant. I mean, that's just it destroyed her village and her home. Like it wiped the whole. Like that elephant was not playing wow. games. Yeah. You understand? He, they so made Ghost right. in the Darkness. So it's the Norsemen, right? Yeah. <laughs> they made Ghost in the Darkness. Now we need this elephant movie. Like we need oh my God. that movie. I was just like, no, that's crazy. But that's what the that's what the cat's giving me. It's giving me those vibes. It was just like, oh, oh so you experiment on me? You did. <laughs> You think you could do that to me? To us? It just like goes on a killing spree. Not my like, family. I'll kill, I'll kill everybody in this house, even people that's nice to me. I don't care. Kill all you. So <laughs> this makes me beg the question: How many scratches from this cat are you going to get, especially on the crotch, before you stop thinking a hundred grand is worth it? I'm just asking yeah. that I question. Been left. But he's a, like but he's this cat is a different though. level. That like always gets his mark never gives up like it makes sense that he stayed i mean yeah his ego is driving, driving yeah his ego is driving that it makes sense that he stayed me personally i know when i know when to leave okay. the first scratch on the face i'm out dude i'm gone i'm not right. trying to kill a cat kill this cat i'd be like bro that's not what i do is if it ain't a human <laughs> no no cats i'm not gonna kill no cat I'd have tried, and then I got messed up by this cat, and I'd have dipped. I'd have left. Now, oh, this dog person, I'm not going anywhere near this cat. I was on a shoot <laughs> once where we showed up, and they were like, okay, no matter what you do, don't touch the cat. And I was like, great, got it. And I great. didn't. But our sound person did, because they're a cat person. They were like, well, I know cats. It was like, and it punctured her hand so deep, it looked like someone oh had stabbed God. her with a number two pencil. Like, you could see into Whoa. her hand, into darkness. Um, oh, jeez. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was awful. So I don't no, I'm not messing with that cat at all. No money in the world. You'd be like, that cat yeah. kills people? Cool. I'm I'm moving to Ohio. Do that. <laughs> yeah. If the cat was just trying to give the guy a heart attack, did he really have to burst through that other guy's Do all body yeah. just to get him I mean, I guess maybe, he but couldn't he have done that to his, on his fancy rich man slippers or something? I think something. No. <laughs> I feel like because the guy he was the main culprit, he he made him suffer for a while. Yeah. Portrait him a bit. Because that he went through, he suffered. So True. you gotta suffer, bro. So when the uh when the assassin was shooting at the cat with the really high tech and not giant laser sight, um <laughs> <laughs> do you think it was supernatural consequences that prevented it from hitting it the cat? Is. It's not possible. Right. That was such a great scene. <laughs> I always think of Scrooge when I think of that actor because he's he plays the ghost of oh, Christmas yeah. past. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So, which is the greatest Christmas movie ever made, but that's a whole other. Yeah, story. I think it was supernatural. I think the cat had been given some yeah. sort of dark supernatural powers from the fifty deaths of fifty cats. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. It was like it's almost cat. like. Go ahead, Brian. It was like when Michelle Pfeiffer becomes Catwoman. You know, she's Ooh. like risen from the dead by all these bites from these cats and everything and all this like yeah but it's like you can't tell me that all these alley cats got this power you right <laughs> no it's combined it's combined like uh sadness you know yeah, it's like all the trauma true. boils up into one mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. that's, that's weird that's one of these yeah. theories that might be from like another movie we were watching uh -huh. that might have that i don't know <laughs> Sorry. everything in the world Sorry. 
that means everything to us as Shemin. Yeah, well, that's one of these theories about like demonic forces, right? Are they yeah. really right. de- like a religious mm-hmm. demonic thing, or is it just like a bunch of bad energy in one place that mm-hmm. manifests into something? The grudge. I find that pretty more believable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the grudge. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's all kind of. <laughs> I feel like energy, like if you really think about it, like molecules energy all that stuff seems otherworldly to me only it's only we we're just used to it because it's like talk about it in school and then people can show you a book and be like this is how an atom breaks down or mo- like stuff like that but that's crazy to think that we're literally sitting here breathing in molecules mm-hmm. breathing a man breathing a mouth keeps us alive like so it makes sense that like and we're turning those it, molecules into energy energy you know what i mean and just think about it like if you're next to a person that has bad energy you can feel it mm-hmm you know what I mean? So who's to say for some people bad energy might be like slightly something demonic or something like that, depending on the depending on the energy. So I think that makes absolute sense. Or it's all just energy, good and bad, but we 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 are the ones that equate it. So the negative energy just comes from all the, the negative you bring and or karma, mm-hmm. if you will. Even mm-hmm. though it's not like an entity thinking that, but if you bring enough <laughs> of it, it could make it could have the same consequences, whether it's thinking or not. It could ultimately bring the same demise. Uh, or possess a cat to run through a human's intertract somehow. Yeah. Honestly, he waited there. He nestled in until the guy came home. He even turned around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cats like warm places. Yeah. And then, no, they do. They, <laughs> they, do. Can, they can fit in like fish bowls and. and his inner, yeah. Yeah, his inner, they're very warm. He's not dead yet. That Honestly, body the most dead. logical part of the whole short. Honestly, <laughs> you are correct oh, yeah, I can that. so i have these are these are all really deep questions but i have probably the deepest question of this entire short um oh. how do they clean the cat after this thing right. because <laughs> that poor actor cat if yeah, that's what it is covered in that gunk covered in that fake yeah. blood and uh-huh. that stuff gets really thick well, really quick I- yeah if it's an actor cat, he's used to this life. He knows this. Yeah, that's probably. He's like, this is nothing yeah. compared to spirit gum. Yeah. <laughs> This guy. I think we should start a thing with IMDb to tell them to put the actor animals on IMDb because they're never That'd on be there, and I wish right. they would be. True, and they make it in the credits a lot of times. Right. We like yeah. Freddy oh, the yeah, dog totally. as himself, right. and it's yeah. the same animal in a lot of films because they have trainers, and it's you know. Mm-hmm. So I think the they, trainers. Oh, or they have to use multiple dogs, them. right? For the one. Yeah. Great way to yeah. honor the animals too. It's just yeah. a thought. So IMDb, if you're listening, they're not. So what was I supposed to? <laughs> We'll hope they are. We always hope. If you catch us on a later podcast or whatever. Uh, so let's move on to the third film, uh, the third short. Um, and then, because we'll, we're kind of taking a while, we want to talk about the Black Phone, no doubt. Uh, the third one, uh, The Vow, is about an artist who's failing and ultimately uh, gets his agent, dumps him, and he leaves a bar and watches his friend get decapitated by a gargoyle. <laughs> um and this gargoyle gives him the hey you know i'll let you live if you never tell anybody or tell anybody you saw my face or describe me he can't they actually go down the list of like anything you could possibly do to explain yeah. it uh he, and he's know. like yeah i'll do it no problem and uh and and there's there's the premise and the story's pretty basic after that it's just mm-hmm. falls beautiful in love with a girl premise. right falls in love beautiful. with a girl beautiful they got a couple kids it's so sad. It is the saddest thing. And this this move this segment yeah. stuck with me so hard oh that to this day that is one of the biggest like twists that made me go, what the fuck? Like I couldn't yeah. I couldn't I anyway, I, I, I want to hear what you guys think because that's why I, I made you guys watch this for this one. So I'll tell you the guy's honest truth. I knew it was her from the beginning. I was like, oh, she's the monster. Because one, it happened too quick. She just showed up out of nowhere in the darkness. She a, she's like a black woman in, in 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 the alley. Sis, we don't do that. <laughs> we don't do that. <laughs> we don't do that. <laughs> I'm scared of meeting friends you got lost. We going right back. To All right. Mom. Nope. We don't. Do, you yeah. exactly. That's the that's the real. There's no Jennifer here. You know what I mean? Exactly. She's a Carlotta, and Carlotta's don't walk in the darkness. You understand me? And so, like, I yeah. thoroughly I knew it was her, but I was like, I was like, oh, is she the creature? I was like, she got to be the creature. And because it's like you just went to the strange man's house, he he grabbed you and pulled yeah, you that, to the corner. You yeah, went to the house, yeah. then you went and got your bags and came back and was like, you know, my roommate. 
Jasmine Blazing game. You a liar. Mind you, where'd she get these clothes from? But still. Where'd she get that that. name from? Kerala? Yeah, what are you, Kerala? I was like, that's new. I actually like that because it's different. It's like a different name that you see. I mean, it's it's a gargoyle trying to figure out what's his human name. (laughs) What what should I call myself? Like, (laughs) Kerala. Yeah, Kerala. That's right. That's genius. Genius. (laughs) That's top tier thinking, man. That's top tier thinking. It's his gargoyle. Doesn't it work here, stuff? And it yep. really killed me because if you think about it, she's cursed as well. Yes. She's mm. cursed because she can't find love because people always want to open their mouth and say something. And she probably was like, hey, none of y'all stop talking about me. Just shut up so we can live <laughs> and have this life together. Like, she had kids with boy. Like, yeah. she did. She was living a life. And obviously, she's good luck because now he had, like, prosperity. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, man. Yeah. He was networked, <laughs> man. She had connections. <laughs> Yeah. You went open, bruh. Lead a past in the past. And now you had to watch your kids turn into these little mini gargoyles and they would oh, just huddle yeah. Yeah. together. That was so sad. It's so yeah. sad. So good though. I think that's yeah. why it's my favorite one because it's just a it's such a good like I saw it coming. I saw the twist coming. I just didn't know how it was gonna come. I was like right. somehow he he had he's gonna say something. Yeah, you knew like eventually, yeah, yeah. that had to happen. It had to yeah, happen. So, so like the way that it happened, and then just how visceral it was given. You know what it gave me? It gave me um if I'm not mistaken, the person that worked with me, I gotta look it up. But it gave me like men in black vibes when mm. uh Edgar turned into the actual like like uh roach. Oh, you know, of the Edgar suit. That's exactly what it looked like to me. It was oh, so yeah, good. when she's changed. Oh man, yeah. yeah, that was hard to watch. Actually, I was like, it seemed like it, it seemed like it pained her to do it, right? To bust out of that body. Yeah, like it, yeah. She didn't want to, but like she didn't want yeah. to do it. But she had no cho- it was like she was bound by something that we don't know. By that vow that, was, like she was, was just as much bound as he was. Exactly, she vow, just yeah. cursed, man. It was yeah. so messed up. He should have just great and always messing up out here, man. I'm trying yeah. to tell you, messing up. But go ahead. Haunting Caesar. Caroline. What do you think? What do you think? It, it reminded me of Wishmaster a little bit because it, it kind of had the the vibe of like a genie, even though it's not, you know, there's no rub in the lamp. There's no like real wish. The yeah, wish yeah. is that like, please yeah. don't kill me, I guess. Uh-huh. Um, but it had that vibe, which I really, really liked. Um, reminded me a little bit of like a Clive Barker story in that mm. way. Um, and the transformation at the end, I mean, you could put that yeah. up against any werewolf transformation against yeah, Hellraiser. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's one of, it's one of the best I think I've ever seen. It was good. absolutely painstakingly long and detailed <laughs> and yeah. gross and yeah. worth it. And then when she's just like with her leathery wings, just like hugging him and being like, I told you now I got to bite your neck. Yeah, You know, yeah. like <laughs> I told you. <laughs> I said, don't say my name. Don't lie. Now <laughs> she did give him a mercy kill. She gave him a quick death. Right. I guess bite on the throat. I know, but like, I mean, me on the, still bleed she out could have decapitated that. him, but she also probably wanted to keep his face looking nice. She was still in love with him. Like, I mean, yeah. How do you yeah, kill yeah. the person you're in love with? How do you do that? The first minute she saw him, because how you give him a pass, not the other dude. Right. He was murdered the guy, but oh, she was like, oh, okay, tell nobody you saw me. <laughs> <laughs> like, she got real excited. Like, mm-hmm. tell nobody you saw me, okay? All right. Yeah. She put on her best little human suit and was like, yeah. I'm so lost. I lost all my friends, and this is fellow Elden Ring. I mean, that's not a terrible yeah. human suit to put on. Like that's that's it's oh. not. good good selection. Yeah, it probably felt nice. They um, <laughs> I think the saddest part of this entire story is that like the artist, like all he can do is fixate on the image of the gargoyle now. Mm-hmm. So like yeah. he is back to creating art, but he can't share it with anyone. He's got it shoved into drawers. It gets ripped in oh, half when yeah. she tries to look at it. Like he's just continued to be tortured as an artist throughout this entire thing it hasn't really made that aspect of his life worth it and there's a little bit of parallel that i pull from that into my own life where it's like you got to be grateful for the things you have like you're not always going to be creative you can't force creativity Mm -hmm. you got to follow the muse you know Mm -hmm. like all that stuff really resonated and felt really sad in a way because he became so obsessed with 
one creating great art and and being great and that he couldn't produce and then mm-hmm. and then he became so obsessed with this trauma that he had that he was like trying to work through it but he couldn't talk to anybody about it yeah that feels that feels really really relevant i work in um i have a mental health uh segment that i do on a podcast for work and mm-hmm. it has been really really nice to kind of talk through some of these topics out loud and it has mm-hmm. brought a lot of things to light about how as artists, we treat ourselves, um, which is usually pretty poorly because we're not really paying attention to ourselves. We're just trying to like get yeah. the work done and get somebody else's story told and like, go, 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 go. Yeah. And there's something to that too. It's like, we kind of do that as creatives and it's like, and we, but we get just as upset when pe- people don't take us as seriously out there, but we don't take ourselves seriously or treat ourselves well enough. How do we expect others outside to like respect our work and us with respect also you know it's and then platforms like tiktok come along and yeah. you know we're like oh look at this opportunity to get a million views you know mm-hmm. and then like you put out a video you put your heart and soul into oh, it and it God, gets like yeah. 100 me. views oh, or like yeah. 500 views and mm-hmm. you have to remind yourself like if i was in a room with 500 people and they were watching my thing i'd be sweating yeah. bullets right now yeah exactly yeah, yeah. And, yeah and 20 people even came up out of those 500 and were like hey i like that i like what you did they even right. the little, little right. heart and some people even say something um, and some people yeah. follow you back and you get to have conversations yeah. and go on their yeah, podcast yeah. right yeah yeah <laughs> no I, I i can totally appreciate that because there are videos that i spend a lot of time on and they flop hard in the video i yeah. spend 10 seconds going hey what's your favorite Man, whatever it Jeez. blows up i'm like what this oh, makes cool. you know it doesn't make sense. That's why you should just always create whatever you want to create. Put it out. Oh there yeah, I think that's what. It, just let yeah. it be. So like, I love that because I did a like a little tap tap thing with um the Marvel character. Yeah. Got like ten k. Right. Mm-hmm. Like ten thousand people. Yeah. I was like, when I sat down, I was just bored one day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was just like, oh, I'll check this out. <laughs> that's the thing I had where I'm like, I put some thought into this. Everybody's yeah. like, that's. That's good. That's great. So I have two kinds of content I make now. I have the content for for me and like my close followers who actually give mm. a shit. And yeah. then I've got my growth content is how I think of it. And uh, so I'm like, okay, yeah. my growth content is going to be short. It's going to be bite-sized. It's going to be the thing that I, I right. started getting views for in the beginning. It's going to be a movie review. It's going to be really, really tight. It's going to only be go. one minute. I'm not going to breathe. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> images popping like up every five like seconds. Cool. Yeah, yeah. And hopefully that brings in some new audience. And then once I have them, I'm like, hey, I took a bike ride. Yeah. Dude, I <laughs> love that video. You did some great editing on that Yeah, video. that one was really good. That yeah. was really for me. That was like I was kind yeah. of feeling in the dumps and like I wasn't haven't been taking oh, care of my body it. the same way during the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, and I bought this wanted. bike and I love it so much. And you know what? Yeah. Work has a GoPro. I'm going to go make a video there about it. Did you have to walk your bike all the way home? I did. Okay. I did. It was about it was about 12 blocks with oh, the with that thing on the back not too yeah not bad i was worried for it's like oh i hope it's not miles that's a long way to go so <laughs> yeah blocks ain't bad okay. i i am enjoying i am enjoying your harry character oh good so, you you and four other people yes i you love can... <laughs> i love harry yeah you gotta check out the one that's too. that's yeah. very much for me i love it yeah no it's and for me i i love how everybody scary. knows stuff about me i'm like I'll that's fine this. New follower, I'll get there. welcome. Yeah, I'll get there. I'll get there. but you're you're I'll, you're on movie talk while well, he's specifically on horror talk, which is a very niche part of movie talk. And yeah. if you listen to uh, P and W Lady at all, she has the actual map of all of TikTok, TikTok. and yeah. that she made. Uh, she yeah. doesn't share it, so if you can find those videos, good she's luck. Up here, um, yeah. yeah, she's actually a Pacific Northwesterner yeah, like me Northwest. and me and all the movie things. Yeah. Um, but she has like. You know where the where the different parts of TikTok are, and where movie talk and nerd talk yeah. is, and where political talk and all that stuff is. So mm-hmm. worth checking out. It's yeah, it's like much. it's like a Middle Earth map. It is, yeah, yeah. That's pretty much what I do. In yeah. nerd. No, and you do. You stay on Marvel talk and movie talk primarily, yeah. and yet while you do talk about horror movies, like on the podcast, not on your channel. So I don't imagine that he's popped up because yeah, a lot of my yeah, followers and mutuals are horror talk people because I dabble in horror enough that people notice mm-hmm. that I'm. A fan so it's kind of interesting uh and then bats in there saying horror talk is for the elites that's what she said <laughs> <laughs> horror talk is for everybody yeah it is for everybody gatekeeper yeah. <laughs> she stuck out her tongue she stuck out her tongue yeah, yeah, yeah. um can you share your tiktok with us just jesse asks what is your tiktok 
Who me? Yes. Oh, haunting season. It's like hunting season, but for ghosts. Yeah. And the ghost behind him is what the very first oh, memory Edgar. I have of you yeah. coming across my feed last year. So. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, I love Edgar. I made him myself. Edgar, He's a fourteen-year-old, yeah. and um, yeah, comes from Minnesota. Oh wow! I would have guessed he was only eight just by looking Hola. at him. That's yeah. all right. Yeah. Is the ghost fourteen years old? I'm very confused by that statement. Well, you don't age as a ghost. So yeah. he died when he was 14. I got you. Yeah, I got yeah, you. Yeah. Okay, it's okay. very sad. It's around the 19, uh, turn of the century in 1900. Uh, oh, so he's yeah. an old, young ghost. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got you. So, very curious. Uh, very so curious. Robert Pattinson in Twilight, the old, young ghost. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking like Casper, but maybe a little older, maybe. Yeah, yeah. 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 kind of like Casper. Yeah. <laughs> So there was one more story within the story, and it was just the witch that had the kid that was telling all the stories. And yeah, the yeah. wraparound. It was yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. Wraparound, yeah. It was cute. Yeah, yeah. It had a quick little ending. Mm -hmm. Don't you just love happy endings? Right. <laughs> that said, let's do a rating on this, because we do have the black phone, and I absolutely want to talk about that movie. Yeah. Black Girl Marvel, what's your rating of this movie? Um, For the anthology, I'm honestly, I'll give it a seven. I thought it was. I thought it was very. I thought it was very well done. The the last one is my favorite, but I felt like they they all were great. And then the overarching story that wrapped them all together that was great too. Because who don't love a whole like gingerbread house witch type of joint to go? You know, right. that's, to me that's a classic tropey horror that people kind of horror that people kind of do. So I'll give it. A, I give it a seven. It was really good. All right, all the movie things. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a seven. Also. Um... I felt like the last one was so strong that it kind of makes up for what the other ones kind of lack. Like the first one's not too bad. I will say like, just cause like the star power it had, you know, everyone's yeah. like, you know, yeah. phenomenal cast in that. Um, and then the middle one is like sandwiched in there, hoping you kind of forget about it. Like, <laughs> like, little, little, hold on. We got this great one for you at the end. So um, the, that last one really like uh, seals the deal for me. So a seven. All right. Haunting season. Yeah. I was going to go the same seven. I feel like if I rated any lower than that, people might clock out at the cat one. And that would be my worry is that they don't right. make it to the yeah, end yeah, of the yeah. cat. If you make it to the end of the cat, you're good to go. If you know that that like has a great ending to it with great practical effects, you're going to be fine. But if you're yeah. watching it completely blind and you're going based off the rating, <laughs> if it's a six, you might turn it off halfway through the cat. You know, yeah. you're like, yeah. okay, I get it. I've seen it. Yeah. Let's watch something else. <laughs> I would even say if you have to fast forward through the cat to get to the third moon, the third story, yeah. if you had to, if, if you had no other Yeah, choice. or just like some of the monologues. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I rated this an eight, like I said, uh, back when I rated on Letterboxd. I still think it's an eight, and it's got nostalgia attached to that, so uh, it'll probably yeah. remain there for the duration. Uh, and I probably would have rated this an eight when I was 13, so that's close to 12. Um, right. Yeah, but I loved it then. Um, so yeah, let's move on to the black phone. Uh, this is a universal picture and it is starring <laughs> Ethan Hawke, which is interesting yeah, to see him. Phone. Oh, there um, you go. <laughs> right. You um, it over my yeah, head. It's, yeah. it's interesting to see, uh, Ethan Hawke doing more oh, bad guys. So this is the second bad guy he's done this yeah. year, uh, which is phenomenal. Um, <laughs> Back. That's what I'm happy about. Movie also stars Jeremy Davies, which I thought was really interesting to see him pop up. Oppum from Saving mm -hmm. Private Ryan shows up out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, and makes me hate him. Very does a very good job of making me hate him. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, uh, you actually got to go see this one uh in the premiere haunting season. You got to actually go sit down and yeah. uh see it with the director was there, yes. Yeah, the director, the writer, Joe Hill was there, and uh oh, nice. Jason Blum, did we decide? Bloom. Blum, bloom. Yeah. Blum, bloom. Blum, bloom, Jason. Blum, bloom. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a wild night. It's the first time I ever got to walk a red carpet that oh, wasn't right. like one that yeah. we did for work. Um, right. <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah, it was it was wild. It was not the experience I was expecting. I was so nervous mm. that I thought I was going to die because I kept having these dreams that I was like on the red carpet with Ethan Hawke. And then he would say, I'd say, Oh my God, I love your movies. And he'd be like, Oh yeah, cool, man. Which ones? And I'd be like, 
Oh, uh, all of them. I like, did the, 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 the um uh and yeah, the dream, I could never get anything out, and he was like so you know, and then yeah. someone came up to me and was like, "You got to delete your TikTok now, sir." And, <laughs> <laughs> That's quite the nightmare. So I was like super nervous, but the way it actually works is like people like me who are nobody in Hollywood. Um, you walk the carpet about an hour and a half before the famous people, and then you just sit in the theater for an hour and a half eating popcorn. But so uh, like showing up to a midnight or anything, basically. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was so much yeah. fun. It was so yeah, much. That's fun. cool. So, what is your favorite or Ethan Hawke movie? If he did ask you that, what would you tell him? I mean, I really loved Boyhood. Um, mm. I was kind of blown away by that. Ethan Hawke is one of those actors where, like, I never, I never intentionally see his movies. I always end up right. watching them and be like, "Oh shit, yes, mm -hmm. great." Mm -hmm. Yeah, that happens with Sam Rockwell too. You know, I like yeah. I never know Sam Rockwell's gonna be in a movie and when he is, I'm uh, like, Oh thank God. This is yeah. a Sam Rockwell podcast. No, We're stands here. We we oh, we great. we've reviewed oh, yeah, him yeah. before. Three so. billboards is like yeah, way up there. Oh my god. As far as yeah. his movies. Yeah, yeah. Totally. All the movie things. Black phone. Oh man, I love this movie so much. Like it like it really blew me away. I, I was kind of going in. I went in pretty blind. You know, I usually just like watch one trailer and try not to watch other like feature or anything. There was this one where Ethan Hawke talks about like he was concerned about taking on this role because it's so dark. And it would, it was, he was kind of like concerned like, oh, will audiences see me differently after this with other films, you know? But, but he's so like eloquent and just, I mean, you guys may have seen that the interview where he talks about being creative, uh, mm -hmm. which is like just a beautiful, beautiful thing and um but like he is excellent in this movie i love that like he's able to do so much with just a mask on too even you really don't you only see a part of his face sometimes you never really see his full face um and this like i cried at this movie i mean at the end like Me man it was just so yeah so good those kids and like, especially malin mcgraw Oh my god she was like stealing oh everything. My god, everything so i like everything. yeah i loved her like as soon as she as soon as she walks in like to that you know um the principal's was office or whatever i was like oh my god it's so good yeah and then just heartbreaking she, too with she not yeah not heartbreaking too with like her dad what her dad is like it was like oh, man, mm -hmm. she was really really powerful her performance, performance in that moment okay. was really great her crying seemed yeah. real she was crying and i was like yeah yeah i was I, like that's real i like the hit by mistake because that's real kid crying right i know yeah. i feel like right yeah. before that scene she asked the director like wait does this stuff happen in real life and he was like yes all the time yeah. you know yeah, and yeah that was yeah. like her realizing it yeah yeah like it was just yeah. it, it sounded like me as a kid yeah that's what it made me uncomfortable i was totally like, yeah it was that, hard to watch i was crying like i was like oh my god like i've never yeah. heard a kid cry authentically yeah before. Mm -hmm. yeah that was so good i can't say enough about it so yeah Black Girl Marvel. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, sorry. Scott Derrickson was supposed to direct Multiverse of Madness, but he left that to direct this. Interesting. Mm. Maybe this worked out because I like what yeah. Sam did. But anyway, what was your initial well, impression? I'm sad because I didn't like what Sam did. But anywho, <laughs> oh, my, my initial impression uh, of this film was, man, was this good to watch. I thoroughly enjoyed myself in the theater. I went to go see it today, actually. Um, oh, wow. Like it left like 11.30 this morning. I woke oh, nice. up yeah. and I sat in the theater and I said, push play. And it started. <laughs> <laughs> and this was like a, a breath of fresh air of a film, right? And not even like in the horror aspect, definitely in the horror aspect, but just like in a film perspective of like, yeah how they shot it, like location, like it was all within this central location. The kids they use, sometimes I don't like kid actors and I'm just like, ew. No, totally, mm -hmm. yeah. Gosh. But these, they were like very intriguing, very engaging. Like that little girl it's is- felt genuine, spirit. yeah. Very genuine, that little girl, my spirit animal, right? Yeah. And, it, and it was like, and it's like very visceral of like, just how, like how kids are. Like when she jumped in to help her brother and that boy, yeah. that Head, which is me. Like, he tell because he's going to die. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. And then the dude kicked her in the face, Ooh. in the mouth, even. And it was just like, 
and they just up against the a gate. Like this is what we usually do. Like the fact that she's willing to throw hands for her brother, mm-hmm. like this is what yeah. this film really got me because it's like at the core of it is a brother sister film. Mm-hmm. It's like we are each other's keepers. We both take care of dad. We both take care of each other. And the, and, then, and then it's just like the world around them, right? And then it's had like a supernatural aspect to it, which I don't think people clocked. And then when you did clock it, it was like, oh, oh that's pretty. See, I went in blind. I didn't know. I just thought I much know, like the sure. opposite of Parasite. I watched Parasite and went, oh, this is going to be about weird, crazy critters that... And it's not right. This right. one, I'm like, oh, it's about a guy that just, you know, he takes kids and he does. You know, oh, there's okay, yeah, oh, same kind of thing. You know, because I was, I kind of went in like, her, like element. I was, I didn't know about know. that. Yeah. Yeah. But, but if you think about it, they both have the element. Yeah. Because he's able to it's connect. Different. Them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because remember, he, the father, finally let it out that the mother was able mm-hmm. to, like, she end up eventually. It started in her dreams, and then she eventually end up seeing. Yeah. people and hearing people and stuff like stuff like that and then it's like each got a gift but like a separate gift mm-hmm. essentially but she did end up seeing the kids like in front of the house but it was just great and then the reveal of the house being across the street oh my oh. god yeah <laughs> i actually that one i picked up on i i i i, I just I did not pick up on i, I didn't I think like... they were in the right house mostly because of the brother and i was I gonna say they were in the right house but like i, didn't, I, I wasn't was as the house, across I the street house, like right across yeah the street. I, was, I don't know i just it, i just had this sense i was like oh he's gonna walk out the door across the street i just kept saying that to myself um, i mean that's good but i did, this film was so good man i just yeah. i was like i would go see this again this film was really good i i yeah. absolutely agree and as i mentioned at the beginning of the show i'm not a blumhouse person generally speaking when a blumhouse product production comes out you guys can attest to this i tend to groan i tend to go mm, okay we'll see how this goes and i I was very impressed with this. And again, I have to agree. I think Ethan Hawke's acting, he's got a mask on the top half and he's acting with just his mouth and it it comes off perfectly. Yeah. Or he acts with just his eyes and he gets to do yeah. the variety, uh, which I thought was fantastic. Um, and I think that it was interesting because I would love to go back and watch to see if there's a phone in the house across the street where the kids were going over with from their, their graves and calling him because... They obviously were calling from across the street. They weren't necessarily showing up, although they did. It was weird. Mm, but it almost yeah. feels like there was another black phone that we don't see, and there's a conduit. But that's just my head mm. canon. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that it's interesting that this is a brother-sister story. It's a sibling story, but it's also there's an antithesis of a brother-brother story where they don't care at all about each other and are completely estranged from each other in a sense. And... That's how much Ethan Hawke cares about his brother yeah. as we get to see what happens. So it it shows how yeah. it can happen at yeah. both extremes in one film, uh, which I thought was good. The 70s aesthetic, you can't beat these days when they're doing that. I automatically go, okay, okay, I'm in. 70s aesthetic. I don't know what that is, but you put a horror movie in the 70s, yeah. I'll probably like it more just by default. Um, so yeah, I, I agree. This is this is a great is movie. Is that your era? 70, 70? 80s is technically my era. I would have been kid in the 80s so um oh i didn't ask you guys if ethan hawk had asked you what your favorite movie was of his what would you guys have said had you been on the red carpet with him all the movie things I don't Dude. Know. I um, yeah i don't know because i haven't seen like every like i've heard i haven't seen first reformed i hear that like, he's great in that i mean my gut initially is always training day mm-hmm. just because i like absolutely love that movie but Honestly, that yeah. might be the only film of his I've actually seen. <laughs> Mine is a good one. I mean, Explorers is great. Mine but... is still Explorers, without a doubt. Yeah, that's yeah. the movie I remember him from. I still love it. I still watch it. Yeah, that's my ET, if you will. Yeah, for sure. Um, we we're just talking about that this week. I finally watched. Um, this is totally unrelated, but I finally watched The Legend of Billy Jean last night. Nice. Which also has Kristen Slater. That's right. Right. So, yeah. And he was he was popping off with movies back then, wasn't he? Oh yeah, he was like yeah, he was pretty young in that one. But yeah, I mean, maybe the, maybe the Magnificent Seven, but you know. Oh yeah, yeah, he's great in that. I'm like looking at his like his film his filmography because I really yeah. can't. There's some actors that I can like. You t- you give me a name, I'm like, oh, he was in this. I love this. I got to do this. I got to do this. Yeah. But Ethan Hawke, I'm just like he kind of like he disappears. It's kind of like what Dean Susan comes, mentions. Yeah. Until he pops back into my eye, I'm just like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I thought you you mentioned the mask work. Um, 
and and i thought mm. like almost every time someone wears a mask in a modern horror movie they contort their body so much that their heads like twisting to the side and their arms yeah. are like up and it's yeah. it's gotten so tired so 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 tired that anytime i see a mask i'm like oh boy here we go again <laughs> and All right that clip that that you mentioned um where he he's talking about like oh i didn't want to take this role yeah he mentions yeah, yeah. the idea of the mask and the idea of it yeah. kind of getting back almost like in a in a theater school kind of way to getting back to like like greek uh you know, theater yeah yeah uh -huh. mask work and like like going back to his roots as like a student to to kind of study that again i, I just think that's so cool that he yeah. brought that level of work and it, it totally works because when you see you, you connect with him immediately you almost feel for him because of the, yeah. the way that his voice is as the character totally you you sense like a, a little bit of weakness yeah, yeah you sense a struggle mm -hmm. a weakness and he's he's very genuine so when he says yeah. like well i'm not gonna hurt you you're like hey, oh maybe he might not right like yeah. that might not be his plan mm -hmm. yeah where is this gonna go and then upstairs yeah and that's what i was gonna say and then the first mm -hmm. time you go upstairs and he's sitting there with his shirt open or shirt yeah. off and he's got the oh. belt it's one of the most yeah. terrifying moments in a horror movie i've seen <laughs> did he pack on a little weight for this role because he did he looked beefy yeah. like he'd been working out but he had a bit of a gut and i was I like that's the skinny of, kid right yeah i love every piece of i say ethan can put on a little weight little, little <laughs> uh -huh. i was like there you go ethan i said Look yes I liked it. But that was yeah, that's I I kind of I, I don't know, don't kinda I agree with you because it's the scene where he's like he's like, What's your name? Like, you know, tell me your name. And then he's like he tells him a fake name and he throws the thing at him. He was just like, See, then I was gonna let you go. Like he seems so sad. Like, <laughs> oh, you know, so like, heartbreaking. Oh my God. Yeah. And then you actually see his eyes like well up at one time when he's talking to him, like he's about to cry. Uh -huh. And I'm just like, I love Usually I'm a person who I'm like, give me all the backstory. I'm a, I love backstory. I love like character development. I love these things. I love seeing what like like the world building, all the thoughts, all that kind of stuff with these characters. But I love that we don't really get much about that. I love that it's just like he be kidnapping po folks from the dawn of time. Mm -hmm. He just be kidnapping people. We don't understand why his little cokehead brother finally got to the conclusion. That was hilarious, by the way. They were literally in the house where the boy was. Yeah. And you not <laughs> listen to him because he's too cold. And he and, and I was like when he when they did that one scene where he sat down to do like one more like like bump or mm -hmm. whatever he looked up, I was like, he about to figure it out. And he was like Yeah. <laughs> Like, I'm glad they didn't spoon feed that too hard though, because they could have then done an outside shot of the house and then zoomed in on it and like Yeah. They didn't. They let us have a little did. leeway there because they had all these other shots they were going to do where they did zoom into the house and show this and show that they were like mm, we don't need to do it at this moment <laughs> it's like we got these other ones coming right. up but it was just such a i just i just love the aspect of essentially his sister found him essentially like his sister, yeah it had to be it had his, to be her sister like i, I love sister that they him. both they both had a hand in that like he killed yeah. these dudes like when not well the one dude he killed that dude like he he took matters in his own hands. He finally. Oh, man, I love that. Like the, he was like Home Alone's that whole thing. Like yeah. yeah he's he finally <laughs> like, like the biggest bully, like yeah. the biggest bully he's ever had in his life. He, that's yeah. even his daddy because his daddy is just a heartbroken little drunk that mm -hmm. needed this moment to realize that his kids is what matter and not his own grief and yeah. not his own, yeah. all that type of stuff. Like wallowing that. So like not only did he step up. But the sister was like, yo, 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 I, this is, this is, this is my thing. Like, I can't mm -hmm. shut down this gift because it could save my brother. Like, I've been having dreams about all these kids. And I just, her acting is great, though. I love that girl. I can't wait to see what she becomes. And like, oh, man. I'm dying for a Gwen <laughs> sequel. I want, yeah, I want her totally. to go to college and have to solve some other mystery with the yeah, yeah, powers yeah. that she's put at bay I for years. I'm like, like maybe she's learned how to hone her abilities or something like that because that little girl her acting man like her acting is amazing like when she was cussing out god i was like if she's <laughs> yeah I that was so, like her little she, prayers are so funny <laughs> me because i've had times when i was younger growing up in church and you know she's like you know, she comes back goes, amen amen Forced, no, literally, yeah. no, literally, being forced to go to church, forced to yeah. listen to these 
speaks words, read the Bible and stuff like that. I would be praying. It's been plenty of times where I've cussed God out. Yeah. And I'm like, if he knows it's on my heart, I might as well sing it out loud. <laughs> like, <laughs> he knows. Right. He already like, knows. And he's like, I, I get it. Out. Yeah. I was like, if that little girl ain't me, I felt so connected <laughs> to this film because I actually have an idea for a film about a brother's mm-hmm. sister. But. Nice. What's great about that moment too is that th- it very easily could have been a like a, a I know you said we're not supposed to curse on here, but it very easily could have been a shit on Christianity. It's the sort of moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. And um, and that would have been so easy yeah, to be yeah. like, right, audience, right. aren't the Christians uh-huh. real? Like, no, but it wasn't like it, it was totally, totally honest and truthful. And, very honest, for sure. yeah. oh, and, 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 and very truthful to I grew up in the church too. My dad's a minister. It's very truthful to oh, wow. what it feels like to, mm-hmm. to wrestle with like real life yeah. things and feel like nobody's listening back. Yeah. Well, especially when nobody in her life was listening, who else is she going to turn to? She knows that Jesus is the only one that is listening all the time. She's like, you too, man. Come right. On. Yeah, exactly. I love yeah. the once she once she reversed that and she's out there peddling her brains out trying to find the house. She's like, come on, Jesus, help me. Jesus, Jesus, help me. Mm-hmm. I, I love that yeah. they brought it into that as well. Um, yeah. But I also like that they showed it. So they showed like her religion as like it's, 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 it's a duality to it, right? It's like it's like, oh my God, like, okay, I've been praying, nothing's happening. Why ain't you doing this for me? But then it's like, okay, I've been praying and I'm also working it myself. I'm not just sitting here waiting for a prayer. I'm praying and actually putting something towards it. And look what happens. I found my brother. So it's like yeah. one of those things that I'm, as a Christian, I'm just like happy that they show that in a good light for once. Mm-hmm. Like, because everybody takes pop shots and it's not all about, this invisible dude up in the sky it's literally about like internally you and how you feel and and, because honestly Mm -hmm. praying and all of that helps me it might not help everybody everybody but it helps me but to see it in film done in a way with like a care to it as much they give care to everything else in this world Mm -hmm. i was like thank you i was like on top of that they they made it to where these powers which would in most movies be considered demonic were yeah. her right. she's like no this came from jesus obviously i have powers that's god connection that's and i like that it wasn't this negative thing it was a positive yeah. and even the cops were like how did she know this and they believed yeah. her oh, and i, I like that yeah. as well yeah I yeah watch that one cop in the face the white cop i well, yeah, wanted yeah. to punch him in right. the face because yeah. she was she was just spot on she was like you you, you think i'm the like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the <that's so> good. <laughs> It was just mm-hmm. amazing throughout this yeah, whole movie. Great. And the little boy, his 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 acting is great too. It's a subtleness to his acting, mm-hmm. which is very rare to it was see. in his so face. Much, very much in his face. It's a subtleness to his acting. And honestly, I'm gonna be all the kids. <laughs> honestly, mm-hmm. all the kids did amazing, especially like when they were like their dead counterparts. Mm. They were like, I almost cried when like. I forget his name, but it's like the one that defended him. Robin. Yeah. Robin. Robin, yeah. Robin was teaching him how to like how to punch with the with the phone. Yeah. I was like, if this is not, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm about to cry. Oh, I'm about to cry. And then it was like that was the last phone call too, because he was just like, this is it, buddy. And That's it was like, it. If yeah. it, the last one would be the one that would give him the courage because he was the one that talked to him in the bathroom, the one that protected him, the one that, you know, mm-hmm. like, that was his last call. So I, I, I just, have a question to pose. What's up? Did the th- so this was the fifth kid all four of them called him did the three kids before call the fourth kid i feel like right. i feel like they tried but because they don't have his abilities nobody could get through because remember he said like they think the phone rings but like there's nobody on it so like yeah, obviously- even oh. even the grabber said that i heard it ring yeah. once but i didn't there was nobody there yeah. there was nobody there nobody has his gift nobody has his gift yeah, but his gift to manifest had to be him. Yeah. Nobody that's, had it. That's why the movie was made because if it right. wasn't him, he's just another dead kid. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And then I had somebody pose this question to me. I was on another podcast. I love you guys, but I was on another podcast yeah. earlier. We're betrayed. Earlier I'm kidding. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I was on another podcast earlier today, and he saw Black Phone. He asked me. He was like, "Okay, so when when he puts the phone to the grabber's ear." Like, how did he hear the kids on the phone if he's never heard them before? And I was like, the kid is a conduit. Because remember, he was he's touching the phone. The phone. Like Thor's hammer. There. Yeah. Literally, like, he's touching the phone. And he was like, oh. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Clearing that up for me. I'm like, he's the conduit. So like he's able to hear because the boy is touching the phone. He was like flabbergasted. But I I love that this movie was great, man. This I've been is, on a it's feel like it's, it could come from me. I'm just saying, I love it because the supernatural aspect. I love magic. I love magic. Continue. I've been on a handful of uh ghost hunts uh, as a camera operator and and like mm. to experience it and I I don't often feel anything when I'm by myself but I yeah. definitely felt things when I was around people who identify as mediums and psychics mm. and and sensitive people yeah, so yeah. I, I really do think there is something different that changes in the atmosphere when you're around someone who has some sense. sort of enhanced human ability yeah no, I, I, I agree to that. I agree to that. Yeah. Facts. I've been around stuff like that my whole life. I've seen stuff my whole life. And it's only as I've gotten older and kind of stepped away from like reading my Bible and things like that, that I don't see stuff anymore. Hmm. So. I can't wait to talk about it on my podcast. <laughs> You're going to have to come on and talk about it. There, there you go. Much fun. Oh, I, I have stories, man. Like, and honestly, I still have like, up into I used to see really dark, really dark stuff as a child, and then as I got older, I started seeing stuff. I promise you, I saw an angel before in my grandmother's room right before she died, like maybe like hours before she died. So. Wow! Yeah, we're gonna dive deep into that <laughs> <laughs> on haunting season. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good point, man. Shameless plug. Yeah. So we should have had haunting season here last week as well because we had all the deep voices and he's got one too and he's getting in there and doing that asmr oh definitely honestly if 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 haunting season and cell phone of these came together and did like an asmr like podcast i'd be all over that well have, ted was here and he's he ted was over here and he was over here talking like this it was great it was just oh, a, really? a, it was because brian has it too everybody's got that like i'm the one oh, with the brian. high pitch yeah I love Brian. So Brian is like my favorite. He's top tier. He's he's up here. Everybody else. Comes now, didn't you do, do an calmness. ASMR? I yeah. I don't generally have the calmness for it, right. so I, I tend to get higher pitch because I'm like excited. My yeah, whole yeah, thing yeah. is like, oh, I'm so excited about this movie. Right. Yeah. But uh, you know, if you're yeah, as calm you as just, Brian, uh, there you go. You just, uh, you know, David Cronenberg. Uh, Let's just that's take it down a notch here. Slow it. Honestly, Smitty, that's not bad, man. And, uh, <laughs> A little yeah, deeper. Time. I can also just get my voice mod out and just lower it. Just oh, cheap. Love, just I would cheap. love to do a deep voice podcast. And there's another podcast that I'm trying yeah. to do, which is uh in my I have a podcast studio here at work and it gets pitch black if you turn out the lights. And so it would be oh, wow. interviews in pitch black, but shot on infrared. Oh, so the dude. audience can see us, but we can't see each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that'd be good. Just sitting there like, you know. Oh, you know, yeah. if we plan something, I'll come to LA for that. Yeah. Yes, I will. I'll travel for that. I'll, I'll travel right, for that right. if you guys, if you ever want to do something. Yeah. Like, if we can plan it, I can save my money, do whatever. I'll I'll come out for any of you guys, really. Now so remember, you coming to Oregon, anyway. you get two of us. Just saying. Right. Um. Two for, two for the price of one. Yeah. Actually, three because my back seat is there. So. Right, and technically there, Justine yeah. is also right there in Washington, so you can get four of us by coming yeah. to the Pacific Northwest. Just. But I'll, hold on, hold on. Hasn't rained here in like five years. It's there. It's fine. I got water. True. And we've we've had record rainfall. This year's yeah, been like, way rainy. Be outside like, if you're insane. over here. Like, yeah. I'm gonna visit them first, and then I'll bring some water back to oh, you. Oh, there you go. Let's go. Biggie's also in California. There's a ton of us over here. There's a lot of people in California. Yeah. I just, um, yeah. See, that's what I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get to these places so I can be around people because I don't know. I was trying to hang out with Cat Lady JJ because I think she's in Chicago, but she never responded back. Oh. I'm going to be in Chicago this weekend, next weekend, oh. the weekend after the one we're in. That's <laughs> next, yeah, next, yeah, next yeah, yeah. weekend, yeah. Next weekend. Cool. Any other thoughts on the black phone before we digress too hard? Amazing. Love every second of it. Yeah. I loved it. I think, Definitely I going to my collection. I thought Ethan Hawk did an amazing job. And once again, we are surrounded by the GCPD because none of these cops <laughs> do with anything. Stupid cops. And then yeah. well, some, the guy in the, the guy at the end is like, take it to the officer that broke this. No, uh, but take it to the little girl and her brother who took care of who did your job. Exactly. <laughs> They're not giving credit to the little girl. That's never you know, gonna happen. Wait. And then he went back to school with this new confidence. He just walked back to school. Everybody. Mm. I loved that. I love that he just walked oh. right in. And he goes, "No, call me Finn." 
My bad. He didn't look like he was like seven foot. He don't look like he could take down no no mm-hmm. bad, you know? But I did though, and I murder you too. Like that's what I would. I mean, I those three bullies are never gonna touch that kid ever again. Right. Oh, no. oh. Yeah, but that's because of Gwen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll get a, another rock thrown at their head. Yeah, um, yeah. rock on the head. She's a beast though. Oh, but let me find out that one of my like one of my like classmates killed a human being, like a whole man. You don't mess with that person. You just leave that person alone. I think that was the most unrealistic part of the movie. Most people would have just like stayed away from him because they would have been like, what yeah. did he do? He's a murderer. Regardless of whether it be for the right reasons, people are still I don't think weird. that's unrealistic. I don't think that's unrealistic because he got kidnapped and all the other kids died and he made it out alive, regardless of how he made it out alive. But He's the kids are weird, man, and they're mean for no reason and sometimes for the but oddest they're, reasons. They're, I don't know. Yeah. Were me like all those kids in the hallway were mean to him. But if you got some true fans like that girl, she was just like, "Hey, Finny." Yeah, but she liked him before his confidence, so she was already a shoe in. It don't matter if you kill somebody, I might not like you no more. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. Like he went through something traumatic. Maybe she's into that. Maybe she is. She's yeah, like, she's like, she, he's a real tonight. strong man, right? <laughs> kill somebody tonight, Finny. <laughs> tonight. <laughs> I got somebody on my list. You got blood on your hands. Her house Finny. was the other house, right? That was the empty house. Was her house? Uh, it was her house. <laughs> right. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, he did dig the grave for Finney as well, right? Because they showed an empty grave ready to go yeah. for him. Like he was ready <laughs> to kill him uh, yeah, sure on the verge. Just showed you how close he was, you know. Right. Um, but that show, well. Kids couldn't rest because remember they were like, "It's getting close." So that means that they've been around, following him, knowing that he dug the grave, knowing what he was. Knew what was happening next. Just oh yeah, they knew. Like how, Randy, oh. how Randy was like, "I've been here with you the whole time. We all have like, you like we've because they couldn't rest." Right. Yeah. And like, mm-hmm. oh man, but the way he snapped his neck, you know what I'm saying? Because that arm is meant. You feel me? <laughs> We're going back to his arm is meant. <laughs> that is so good. I did uh, love that the moment that they interacted, the grabber and Finney interacted. He was already effing him up. He effed him up with his rocket right in the arm and gave him a nice cut. He just mm-hmm. he never took that dude's shit. It seems. That's why that's why um I believe he was like Finney's like special, right? Cause I'm not saying that all the other kids p- didn't put up a fight. No, we know like, they would have because they were scrappers. Every one of them oh, could kick sure. the crap out of bigger people. But so, Finney, yeah. Finney, Finney's the only one that drew blood. Finney's the only one that didn't play the game. I mean, he had help. But he still kind of like didn't play the game. Like he was different, and we know why. But like he was different. So like I love that. You know, that's the something that simple could make a film um, way more amazing than you having all these elements dripped out into it. It was a simple premise, a simple thing that kind of helped him get out, and just amazing, um, like cinematography, amazing storytelling that just because I cried. Like right, I cried at the end. Like when he when he went to the combination, I was still a little skeptical if bro died because you know they always want to bring somebody back at the end or if he changed like, the lock because we don't know whether he would have changed the lock i was right. like i thought yeah. i was like is this gonna have the same combination yeah i, know. I was, I'm like, I was like move faster i'm like run up the steps <laughs> but he didn't need to that's the thing finny was finn at that point did not need to key the confidence if he had gotten back up he would have just kicked him right in the face and exactly and I, anyway. I was still like my i was like on edge people in the theater around me were literally like when he went to the door the first time he he got the lock and he ran out the park. People was like, yes, yes. Like people were clapping. Like like that's people were very emotionally attached to this film, and I don't see yeah. stuff like that no more. And I think that's amazing, especially with horror, especially with yeah, horror. Especially horror. Oh yeah. You know, mm-hmm. We were, and, but that's how I feel like that's how you get horror people. Like that's how you get people to like horror. Like you make it so that they're you get connected to somebody, at least one person, something in a way. And they made us super connected to Finney the moment he got on got on screen. Uh, Ayina asked the question. They haven't. Uh, she hasn't seen the film, and probably not. But did they explain why he wore the mask? No, they never explain it. But my assumption is that he's a person that lives in this neighborhood. He shows his face. Yeah. He has this van, so he covers his face in case the kids get away. That's but and also, it's intimidating. But also, I don't think he likes his face. Hmm. Because he wears it when he's even upstairs. Like even though he's sitting there waiting for somebody to come upstairs. Hmm. Moment Finney made a mistake and took his mask off. He freaked out. <laughs> he freaked out. Like I don't think he likes his face. So he's kind of like covered up. Like he's always yeah. wearing, he's wearing those sunglasses, and it's, it looks like he has makeup on. Where's mm-hmm. that hat? You know, mm-hmm. it kind of does. Yeah, I was curious if he was face, like but... actually a um like a like a local performer at birthday parties or something. I feel right. like I feel like, like he was. That part was real. Like yeah. 
I feel like he was, and like he got so into like like keeping his face covered. Yeah, they don't give much away. They don't give like why he kidnaps kids. They don't get. Why. I like it though. Don't tell me why everything. Don't, I'll fill that in myself. Like, 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 right? I don't have a problem with that. Like, which is why I didn't have a problem. No, with right. Go deeper into his yeah. character, but like they don't give you a lot of these elements, and it's still a great film. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean, it makes it it makes it even more like kind of crazy to watch because it's like, okay, why does he do this? Why? Why is he? Okay, why is he nice to him, but he killed the other boys? Like, it, you don't know which way this film could go. And it go it goes in a way that makes everybody happy. <laughs> it's like, the okay. mask also had several pieces. Uh, so there was one that was mouthless. There was one that was just the mouth. One that was the head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it felt like it was fully take interchangeable. Off, take off parts and all that type of stuff. It, it definitely makes me want to cosplay this bad guy, not because I want to be oh, the yeah. bad guy, but it's a cool looking bad guy. They did a good job of making kind of an iconic looking bad guy. It's a, it's a simple suit, man. Mm-hmm. It's a simple cosplay. Like you gotta love the simple cosplays that have an effect. The simple. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Ethan Hall did his thing, man. He was like gentle, but yeah. like, like rough when he needed to be. He was like, you know, you love your brother, but you killed him. Like, come on, bro. Like, <laughs> he was an idiot, but he was my idiot. That's how I feel about my brother. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that how most people feel about their brothers? Yeah. yeah. Like the default of brothers. All right. Why don't we go ahead and rate this film? Uh, we are just about out of time as it is. Um, why don't we go with all the movie things? Uh, it's a nine for me. Nine. Easy. All right. Yeah. Black Girl Marvel. It's a nine for me. Easy. Haunting season. I'm going full 10. Ooh, this is a movie that nice. I will watch yeah, yeah. probably the rest of my life. I'll come Very back cool. to it once yeah, uh, every couple of years. And just that. anytime that I kind of forget about some of the plot points, I'll pop it in and be like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It has to disappear from my brain for a minute. Like and that. then I'll come back to it like, Hell, this this movie. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot this is a I 10. This yeah. The scene with the boy with the thing. I love it. Like it's just like a- So I'm the low rating in the group. That's weird. I I rated this an 8 um because I think it's a solid film, uh, definitely okay. worth the watch. Um can't, there's not a lot of criticisms, but I just <laughs> <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> Uh, it's 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 definitely a solid film. But I I don't have much in the way of criticisms, but at the same time, it didn't. I guess it didn't grab me quite as much as it did you guys. It's still definitely very good. Everybody should see it. I feel like because it's um Blum, it's Blum by the way. Because it's Blumhouse, and you don't really particularly care for Blumhouse. I think like that took away a, a number like, subconsciously. Like you didn't like you just you're you not know, just, you're not wrong. Like, <laughs> you're not wrong. Um. <laughs> I need more of these from Blumhouse in order to redeem things like Freaky and other things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Fair. but yeah, otherwise, yes. Uh, that said, uh, this has been a very special episode of The Real Study, episode 36. <laughs> Thank you, Haunting Season, for being here with us and the you, great friend. lineup Good of horror you. movies. Um, that said, <laughs> that's technically the end, but we're still live. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And and we'll do Blood Diner. Um, we'll save that one. Honestly, yeah. no, we should do Blood Diner and Slacks and something else. I'll see if I still have my old production binder from... I'll try to find another yeah. anthology movie. Not that there's a ton of horror anthologies out there. Uh, yeah. But now we are into the weird phase where we are going to raid somebody because we are on Twitch yeah, and Twitch has a feature. Transition. And uh, let me see, is anybody even on? Ooh. Wait, yep, we got one of the cool people. Tales from the Hood would be great. Oh, there you go. Ooh, There's an okay. anthology. Tales from the Hood. Uh, and the, the original. I, I, I thought I liked you. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to raid Smash Bros, who is a friend of the channel. I've never heard of Tales from the Dark Side, but I've heard of Tales from the Crypt, and that's what I used to watch growing up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this Tales from the Dark Side was the, yeah, the cheaper yeah. knockoff of than Tales from the Crypt. Like it was yeah, the and it wasn't on like HBO or right. anything. It was the outer limits yeah. to the Twilight Zone. It was the you know yeah. same kind of yep. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I was remember it came on really late at night. I hope I hope uh Ina wrote those down. Those movies. <laughs> he probably did. She's pretty good at that. So oh yeah, she's uh, she is, she's fantastic at what she does. Uh, that said, we're raiding. You guys have fun. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.